totality. Table back at the Bone Pony Ranch. Top in your totality. Here we are, folks. Yeah, back we even brought again. back Frank. Hello. Frank is with <laughs> us, as yes. many of you know from the beginning. Uh, in you, the beginning, there was Frank. There was Frank. Uh, or as as we Pop should say, cold one. <laughs> sponsored by a uh, hot, not really. No, we're All not, right. not sponsored by anybody here. Rain, Rain Shadow Legends. I was <laughs> <laughs> Get your epic warrior today. <laughs> not to make fun of Rain, because we will oh, totally. Yes. Yeah, Rain. Yes. If, if if you want me, yeah, to Rain. Do if you're stuff. if you're watching, Rain. Please. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we'll I'll, we'll I'll hype that it. up. I'll I'll yeah. do it. Oh, you guys really turned coat real fast. Oh yeah, we had no integrity. <laughs> <laughs> not turning coat. I mean, we're yeah. playing. We're playing for the kids, but I mean, if we want, if we want those uh, raid kickbacks, we won't say no to that. We're about helping the kids, and that's about it. And yeah. and re- no, <laughs> that's gonna go on to a whole raid. Thing. Yeah. Um, but we are here today with a pretty cool game that we're gonna play. It is from the <laughs> publishers over at Free League Publishing which make a, another game that we really loved that we found recently called Simba Room. Oop, oop. Um, and they recently did a Kickstarter back in March for their new system called the One Ring, which is based, as you can tell, in Middle Earth. Um, if you couldn't tell that... You yeah. can stay here and learn a lot. <laughs> Or yeah, we'll stay. <laughs> we'll teach you. We'll, we'll stay and learn an inordinate amount of information. We'll teach you so much. As yep. Cody and Neil scream at you <laughs> constantly. As dueling lore masters. Robert will probably also jump in. He's a big fan. Oh yeah. Well yeah, but I'm I'm more I'm more used to the two of you. <laughs> Um, getting mad at me for not knowing that's because I'm, you're the I'm little saying. chicken tendy and the three piece tendy. Okay, that's... Steve, you've had plenty and you of just time. nuzzled between our, our flaky goodness. You've had plenty of time. You should have picked up an encyclopedia of Tolkien. At some yeah, point. I have the same one, like within reach. <laughs> you should have read the Cimmerillion three times by now. You should I started, have. I started reading it again the other night. Everybody <laughs> should have their Lord of the Ring books on hand for this. Session. Yep, also, also within reach. Um, you can also have the Hobbit because see, nice. see, nice, see, <clears throat> because uh, it's important as the time frame we are sitting in is the Third Age. He is 2,958. Far future. It is about, for those who are at least somewhat well rehearsed, you've maybe watched the movies or read the books, it is now about 17 years after the Battle of the Five Armies. Uh, Bilbo is currently back in the Shire. He's chilling. Gandalf's running around because uh, the darkness is rising back in to the realm. And uh, there's certain aspects of more people traveling currently, going from place to place because now you have the new, the new old established kingdom of the dwarves. Um, you have certain enemy movements going about as uh, many would know because we'll at least be able to tell the foreseeable future of the War of the Ring. And uh, it's, it's an interesting time. You all, however, we will wait to do introductions because I have a pretty good spot do them um but each of you slowly begins to awake and like as... existence or you are unsure From like night you are unsure. Oh, okay it right. is, well that's it how is, i am every morning it is such it's it's one of those aspects like am I'm i in sure this body I... again Men, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Many of people have sometimes experienced through maybe head injury, um, drunken debauchery, 
things of this nature where you wake up and you are unsure of everything around you you're unsure of who you are what this wall is this beautiful down of a mattress you are sleeping on you start to realize that there is this amazingly soft white wool blanket as you start to wake up you will notice other people also in asleep bed? in separate bed. Wow. In this, in this. I just didn't room. know we were a slumber party. Like, you yes. know. Yeah. You're all waking <laughs> up. If you Always adventure together, sure. you snuggle together <laughs> yeah. too, you know. <laughs> it's cold at night. Yeah. Um, as you begin to continue to awake, awake, you start to pick out certain things. It seems as though. The room you're in is of stone wall with timber reinforced. Inside of the, like, on the stone walls, there is forms of lush moss growing. But nothing looks as if it is destructive to the wall. It almost looks like it's a cohabitation. And even though you're in this sense of confusion not knowing what's going on you still feel as though you are safe and and extremely well rested and relaxed and even with the individuals who you have never met being in this room with you you are also not Fearful of them. We're into it. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. As, um... You start to hear... The babbling of stream. The sounds of nature radiating through... Cracked open wind. Um... And there's, of course, a... A doorway, we'll say, in the eastern side of this room that goes to it is it is cracked open, um, so you can kind of see a little bit into the next room, and it is bright outside. It seems like it is uh just past first light. Is there anything anybody? I roll back over. <laughs> this is a good place. I'm, I'm gonna get just up. gonna snooze. <laughs> I want to get up and inspire all in my party. No, shut up. <laughs> Justin, I know that's what you're doing, but what are you doing in game? <laughs> I'm getting into character. He's a hobbit. He wants to eat second breakfast already. That's right. May I? Uh, may I get up? Yeah. All right, so I'll uh, stand up. Am I wearing any of my gear, or is that laid out? For so me? your What's gear that? would be next to your bed, like your sack, um, your if you have any weapons with you, stuff like that, any of your equipment. You're thunder gunning it right now. Um, but you're actually in the most comfortable cloths. Um, you have probably like a tunic on, a uh, pair of slacks, like caprice esque slacks um and you also are wearing some of the most comfortable slippers that were as soon as you like kind of sat up in your bed were just on your feet oh i would uh just like to inspect the room and just see who's here with me like is this the same for everybody we're all wearing like spa treatment stuff oh yeah your slippers would not be on if you're still in bed because is a place of uh culture now my uh <laughs> my dwarf will be getting up and he'll be grumbling about how the bed's very like too soft and <laughs> <laughs> even though in his mind he's like oh, he's like this bed. shit was awesome yeah. yes yeah. i am so well rested <laughs> but he's like oh this bed's too soft for me yeah. <laughs> and same thing as soon as you kind of like bring your feet over to the bed and when they were touch the the wood floors it, they would slip into these sandals. 
<laughs> he tries not to do the little shiver of like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I'll give myself a pea shiver. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna nod my head at the uh the, the dwarf that's standing up. And I'm just gonna start stretching a little bit as my bones all crack because of my very old age. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you would notice a dwarf. Is anybody else, uh, standing up from bed, or...? Yeah, I'll get up. Alright, so then you would also see Oh, a... I wanted to inspire awe. Are you getting up out of bed, or are you just inspiring while you're laying down? <laughs> I, I said I was... <laughs> I was getting up to inspire awe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he does a flip out of his bed, and everyone's very impressed. <laughs> Yeah. He just flips the pillow over to the cold side and everybody's like, oh, <laughs> oh <man>. new map. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Truly the wisest among us. So are you actually trying to like do some <laughs> ability of inspirement? Yeah. I've All got right. the skill awe. All right, so here's our first uh, skill check, folks. We just need uh, sixes and twelves, yes. right, Neil? Of the endeavor. Um, so pretty much whatever the skill attribute is related to, you have to beat the TM for that. Right. So, and so, however well trained you are in that skill, so like, what is your lore score? That's the lead. Right. What does lore have to do with awe? My lore score is a th is a th no, three, no 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 no. And it's favored. So, so technically, like the uh, the leaf is a is an aspect. It's also labeled as weird. How many how many success dies do you? How well trained are you in the skill? So I am proficient with the skill. So I would get two, and then I get. I've got two skill points or whatever in it, so, so two of the D6s. So I think two D12 and two D6s. So, yep, you are you are favorable in this um, this skill, so you get to roll two feet dice, which are D12s, okay. and you will take yep. the best of those rolls, and then for the amount of skill points you have in that, you will roll the equivalent of success dice, which is the D6s. So you said you had two skill points in there? All right. Uh, what so is your technical number? Oh, like, what? Like the total score? Yeah. Because TN is target number. Sorry, so target number. Target so, number. Will... So, what is your target number? What do you have to be? What do you have to be? So, since awe is in the strength category, I assume it's a fourteen. Correct. Okay. So I have to be a fourteen. That's my target number. Yep. I rolled a uh, four and a three on my D12s, so I'll pick the four. And then I rolled two sixes on my uh, D6s. So there's also T's, if I understand that right. So yep. that's 12 and four is 16 altogether. So, so that you... would be successful. And then I have two of those Elvish runes. So you succeed extremely well in this, uh, <laughs> in this uh, skill check. And you will trying to find one thing. The one thing is the one ring. <laughs> I'm gold. I'm the pinnacle of elvish kind. <laughs> one thing I was looking. For. This is my life. I am lost. Help. <laughs> oh, we, where are we? <laughs> who, who are you people? <laughs> um, Not the first time I've woken up next to a dwarf. <laughs> ah, yes. So, you get a special success. Uh, I think it's memorable, right? Because I think the T's worked like if you got one, it was like 
better than normal, but if you get two, it's like a memorable thing. Yeah, right? so it's like uh, you were absolutely exceptional and memorable. It was an extraordinary success. So, what are you kind of. Get out of bed and just like flex my muscles and be like, Hah! and stretch. Everybody will see this. And you will, you will think, oh my lord, this man is like a statue. That, that was the, the best way you could ever get out of bed in your life. I need to... Like, you are trying to memorize this so you can use it in the future when you... I want you all to be, be golden gods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin, are you staying in bed? You, you said you were gonna jokingly stay in bed, but, uh... You know, you I've just, inspired him now. You you just saw this man arise. Elf. Uh, yes. Fine, I'm I'm getting up. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Um, as you guys start to like move about, Steve, you said you were also getting up, correct? Got up, yes. I I I got up. Um. So as you like start to move about, you would also start to hear in uh, uh you would start to hear faintly outside with with the babbling stream you would hear a voice um and it, and it sounds very captivating and it's almost as if they are they are singing something. And it sounds like it is coming from outside. What is it that you uh, just... wish to do? Check it out. Alright, so... Check it out! The inspiring uh, elf, as they begin to gracefully exit the room, moves into the next room. Is anybody also going to wander with the elf? As the elf, as much as Cody, are you? You're a dwarf. Are you fan of elf? Not fan. Like, where do you? Are you normal dwarf feelings towards elves? What is it? Well, I have the traits of being proud and lordly as a dwarf. Okay. <laughs> so I I probably am like, who does this elf think he is to stitch in front of me? <laughs> yeah, it's very similar to how you felt about the bed. Yeah. <laughs> like, you were impressed, but you are all, like, you're like, ah, that was the worst stretch it, ever. It, 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 Impressive for a bitey little boy like <laughs> Those aren't even muscles. He thinks he can leave the room before me. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for the sapling to bend and sway. <laughs> Not so much stone. <laughs> that was good. Um, are you going to hey, I have a. I do have a question, though. How do I figure out my target number? Because I'm... I can't find So if it. you go to your, uh, the dwarf, uh, characters mm. thingy, thingy, um, you will see the drive stats and it'll have yeah, like endurance. All D6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have attributes where you just roll a D6 and you'll be able to get your strength, heart, and wit. From whatever six you whatever you get on that die. Yep. Yes, I did get that. And then so to do your derived stats, which is endurance, hope, parry, um do you, it is your strength attribute plus twenty two, your heart plus eight, and your wit plus ten. And that goes so you have the big the big square. Below that is where the derived stats go. On that smaller square above that yep. is where your attributes go, and then the target number is twenty minus whatever the attribute. So, like, say okay. if you got a one, say if you rolled a one, you have a strength of seven, heart of two, wit of five, 
for your strength target number, it would be 20 minus 7. So you would be looking for a 13 is your target number. Okay. So the big, the big, is, the big diamond is the target number. Correct. Okay. Right. So I have that messed up on my sheet. But... Yeah, so do I. Um, how do you, it's, what is, what is the target number again? I'm sorry. I, I missed. So target number just... is going to be your attribute minus 20. Well, 20 minus your attribute. Okay. 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 I think that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, for anybody joining in, we are raising money for Extra Life. So hopefully you'll enjoy us playing Free League's Alpha of the One Ring. Um, but all the way down there, it is uh, for children. Mm hmm So, yes, um, Velg would, he would follow the elf after he kind of uh, brings about his plated beard. He actually has, like, plates in his beard. Oh. Um, like, it's male like, plates. Like, leather, like, layered plates. Yeah. Braided uh, into his beard. Yep. That is wild. That's very cool. Yeah, and he's going to tuck that into his belt, and then he will be heading after the elf. Uh, old man is my friend. gear is my gear nearby? Yeah, so your pack and everything, all of your equipment is right next to your bed. You do, I, I, I will state you still feel that level of safety. You don't feel like you need to have any of the stuff on you. Yes, um, but as a dwarf, I, I mean, I need to know that my axe is nearby. Yes, no, I know. Yeah. Everything's right there. I'm just saying, like, you have no, you have no real desire to grab your. Equipment. You're not worried. No, I just want to give else. it a parting kiss. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Axe. Uh, I would like to enhearten everybody in the room um, to kind of, let's, you know, just with my actions, just kind of giving them a nice wave of, come on, let's let's find out what let's, this is more about. Yeah, let's all wander together. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try and instill positivity into everybody around. Okay. No. So, I don't like it. <laughs> so uh, that is my in Harton is uh, level two skill. Uh, my T and to beat is fifteen, and that is a is that just a regular non favored skill? It is a favored. So yep, you'll roll two feet die and then two okay. success die, and keep the best. Right, keep the best out of the feet die. So it was uh, it was the thirteen. So I did a little shit, you know. Like, <laughs> so you didn't succeed? <laughs> no, <laughs> I just undid what Robert did. But <laughs> yes. I, no, sure. it's just everybody sure. stays normal. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Justin is saying like his his statement. <laughs> yeah. So and I'm just gonna I'm gonna head out. You uh, know. Hey hey, hold up hold up! I've got mm. a riddle. I've got a riddle for you. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, what room do ghosts avoid? So. And he's just going to walk out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> this one. <laughs> hey, you didn't answer my riddle. Goodbye. If you don't answer my riddle, they get the club. I are you like my, a. My are, the... <laughs> <laughs> are you like a. Riddle me this. If you don't get to right, he clubs you. <laughs> Riddle me this. Who used to have two working knees? <laughs> that guy. That's nice. That's <laughs> nice, but I need to know where I am. Well, I'll answer your riddle later. I just head out. Are you, are you like a mafia hobbit? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> Um, oh so man! I'm, I'm here to find riddles and distribute them <laughs> forcefully, <laughs> if need be. 
thought Riddle was like also to help with conundrums like in gameplay too. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So is. don't worry about it. But it's also my character. <laughs> it's like problem. It's like problem solving in a way. It's yeah. quick. That's yeah. that's all Riddle is. Um, Steve, what are you doing? You also leaving out of this room? Uh, yeah. He's like he he feels at peace in this place, but at the same time, this place is unfamiliar to him, so he's still a bit cautious. I will say um, you you felt a little bit less at peace when the Hobbit was talking about breaking somebody's knee. Oh, I completely ignored the Hobbit. I didn't I didn't pay any attention to what he was saying because he was talking to the old man. Oh, okay. my guy's more more interested in where he is and how he got here than you know what's what's going on, and he just wordlessly follows after everyone that's leaving the room. Now it's just a hobbit in a bedroom. What's what race are you? You're a ranger. I'm right? a ranger, so yeah. You're just a dude. Yeah, I'm just a guy. Just a guy I stand in, in front of you, like half your height. Hey, I've got a riddle for you. I walk around you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. These, Damn. People, <laughs> these people don't understand a fine riddle. All right, so as you guys get into the next room, I I'm gathering with my club. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm gathering. You're gonna go into the next room, right, Justin? Yeah, I'm just slapping the club in my hand, like I don't know. <laughs> Gotta break four four legs now. Pretty. <laughs> um, so you will now, as you guys enter this other room, you will notice that. Much of the furniture is of a, a, a dark wood. And there, there's one table that looks like a, to be a dining table. It doesn't um, have really any food on it. But there is candles, nice doilies. Um, and as you get out here, you, you now can kind of make out some of the singing. And uh, it is very fine singing, indeed. It is as if it is as young and ancient as spring. Like the song of a glad water flowing down into the night from a bright moon. And you hear it as such. Now let the song be. Let us sing together of sun, stars, moon, and mist, rain and cloudy weather. Light on the bubbling leaf, dew on the feather. Wind on the open hill, bells on the feather. Reeds by the shady pool, lilies on the hill. Old Tom Bombadil and River Daughter. As you hear this very magnificent voice singing outside as you look out towards this area because it's at this point a very open view um of the cabin going out into this luscious garden you'd be able to see out through the windows and the front door um this figure standing in the garden of the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. You can see that the stream kind of cuts through part of the flower, cuts around part of the flower bed. There is a small bridge, walking bridge, that goes across the river and goes to a gated fence. All around you is a thick old forest um but it doesn't look menacing like you many of you know of like older forests that have twisted trees and things of this nature and you see that here but it, it does not give you fright um but yeah and the song kind of repeats as they seem to be walking around and
Well, Master Dwarf, you've done it this time to wake up inside some weird elven home. <laughs> and not remember how you got it. I'll kind of adjust my, my belt and I'll reach for my pipe. And I'll light my pipe. <laughs> and I, I will also know? check to make sure that none of my coins are missing. Oh, boy. <laughs> None of your coins. Would I happen to know where we are? If is this like Elvish? Um, if we got a good hit. I'm just seeing trees, so I'm presuming. Um, elves. <laughs> I'm in some forest. Yeah. It's elf trickery. Yeah, while you look that up, can I talk with my new compatriots there? Yeah. How did you all get here? I don't remember myself, but... Tell me how you got here, man, and I'll tell you how I did. Uh, I don't actually know, but it wouldn't be the first time I've been knocked out in battle. I just don't remember fighting anything. Later. They could not have been a battle. No, I'd be dead if it was a battle. <laughs> I assume the same for myself. Maybe this is what it looks like after we die. Hmm. I do not recall dying, nor do I recall battle. What are you, Steve? I'm a ranger. Looks like a Word. man. I'm just a man. Mm. What's your rough just age? A scruffy man. Uh, 30. Oh, cool. Um, Robert, if you would roll a test. So I am profic or favored in lore, and I've got three. Okay. In that. What is your uh what is your number? So my lore is based on wits, so it's a thirteen. Okay. And I rolled a nine and a three, so I'll keep the nine, and then I rolled a four, a four, and a two. So that's definitely beats a thirteen, but nothing special. Oh yeah, that is another uh big thing in um this game. You are to kinda eyeball it. You don't need to figure out the exact math if it Looks like though it's gonna beat thirteen. That yeah, that's why I just told you the numbers. Like I could tell it easily is gonna beat it. Oh, so. that's great. Yep. Um, that's mess. So <laughs> you <laughs> you would know this place. I swear, I rolled all eighteens. Um, because <laughs> you, you're you're an elf, correct? I know this place. <laughs> You're, you, yeah, you, you're yeah. an elf, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. So, you, yeah. Would, you would know of the stories, especially when you heard the name Tom Bombadil. Mm -hmm. You would know of a forest that borders the Shire that is an old forest where a ageless being calls home In the borders of buckland <laughs> <laughs> so you would believe you are in in fact the old forest i was gonna say is that no that's north of the shire right yep okay so i'm going to be like we are north of the shire in ancient wood See. Well then, I have certainly lost my way. My well. I will have to check my maps again. Hmm. Is anybody else saying anything to this new revelation <clears throat> of new? I just look around. I'm like, yeah, that seems about right. 
<laughs> I can see my house from here. <laughs> it's right over there. <laughs> that hill there, that's where I live. <laughs> yeah, there was my grandma's hill over there. <laughs> <laughs> it was passed down in the family. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering how I got so far family. south, but... Uh, yeah. in, remember in the being grand in... scheme of things. Almost remember being. Yeah, I've seen your map. kind before, Ranger Man. Well, yeah, I mean, it's fine that we're here. On, at least we're in Ariad, or not like you know, suddenly in Beleriand. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd be like, how the fuck did we get there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Curious. Just Cody thoughts. It's fine. Yeah. Just deep lore thoughts. Cody thoughts. <laughs> Okay, um, is there like a path or anything like that? Because you said we heard singing, but did we see anybody? Yeah, so you saw a person out in the garden outside the front door. The door is open of the cottage. It leads... It's just this, Owen. This, <laughs> this path. <laughs> Sorry, I needed to wet my whistle. We demand two hedges. <laughs> two hedges. With a little path. <laughs> a path. Icky, 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 icky. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, so are you guys moving outside? Is everybody still talking amongst yourselves in here? Well, we better sort this elf business out sooner than later. I agree. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not elves, but, uh, yeah. (laughs) Well, tell me, Master Hobbit, how did I end up in some weird forest? That's not where I was supposed to be. I don't know, you guys just, like, pop out of the ground or whatever. Probably (laughs) just did that. So says you, hole dweller. (laughs) I mean, you know what? That's fair. I'll take that. <laughs> Given <laughs> rise to the belief that dwarf women, there are no dwarf women. They just pop out of the ground. It's the dwarves <laughs> who swim with little hairy women. <laughs> I must find my horse at some point, but so let's find out what's happening first. As oh, everybody... no, I know where your horse is. <laughs> As... Can we collect our gear? Yeah, I'm gonna go get dressed. Uh... So, as everybody is openly talking in, like, the foyer of this cottage, where the door is open, and... The foyer. Nobody... <laughs> the foyer. Grand hall. Yeah, yeah. This cottage. Um, the individual outside will turn and go, Oh my! You have all awoken! It is a blessed day. It is upon my glory. <laughs> yeah, hello, what's up? It is good to see you all, and looking in such well health. The master brought you back in very, very not good looks. As she proceeds to almost as if water herself in the flow. Move over to you as graceful as if a stream flowing unrestricted down a down a mountain. Nog will nervously paw at his beard. <laughs> and he'll put his pipe away. I I do apologize that and she is now entering in on the cottage. I do apologize that the master of the house is not here, but I hope I Goldenberry will be of assistance. Uh, pleased to meet you, Miss Barry. It is. It is just Golden Barry. Miss Barry is known. Okay, and I, I take out like a pad of paper <laughs> that I had in my pocket. This riddle will take me down. forever to solve. <laughs> Inscribe this. Pardon me, ma'am. Got an idea for a new riddle. Pardon me, ma'am, but um, I think I speak for most of us here. What 
are we doing here? Well, well, let's let us sit at the table. I've just had food waiting for you, and I will, as I grab it and bring the food over and bring you tea and drink, we will discuss what has happened. It's like some kind of riddle, almost. I'm going to head over to the table <laughs> as I'm patting the hobbit on the back, giving him a thumbs up, just taking a seat. Oh, oh. Come join me, friends. Let's get Are to you business. dying? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> A little too old, that's all. Um, Over to the table. Yeah. And as as she as Goldberry continues to move through, um she will do it still in, in song. You'll kind of hear Gary Doll, Molly Doll, Ding Dolly, Old Tom Bombadil is a merry fellow, bright blue his jacket is, and a yellow. And she'll just start singing that. As Terrible she, fashion. As she, <laughs> as she gets about and bringing you over your. Uh, she has a loaf of bread out there, some eggs, um, and a pot of. Of warm, a uh, hot tea. Then there's also a pitcher of just ice cold water with no ice in it, it's just that cold naturally. And she'll continue this till she brings everything over. Or if you have questions while she's doing this, you can ask. I just start filling some drinks and passing them around, just kind of give her a hand. She goes, Oh, thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure, madam. Master Very dull, molly dull, ding dolly. I'm gonna take a seat at the table. Yeah. yeah. I'll also sit down I'll, and uh, yes. I'll ponder why I'm even here. So, yeah. so you, you say that the master of the house is out. Who is the master of this house, if you don't mind me asking? Ah! He was the one to save you when you all were lost in this wood here. Or at least that's what he said when he found you. Good old Tom Bombardier. Right. So, old Tom Bombardier is a merry fellow. Bright blue jacket and his boots are yellow. Not sure if I believe her. I think she's crazy. <laughs> Who would wear yellow boots? <laughs> My father always said, "Never trust the forest." Master Elf, do you know this fellow? Uh, I think Neil would it be safe to say that I would. I would, with your whole lore aspect and knowing the, uh... Like, as an elf, I feel like forest. maybe I would because I... Right. And, and the age of elves in the land, you would have heard tale of Tom Bombadil. You may have never... I don't think you would have ever encountered Tom Bombadil. I've never met him. Right, right. But you would have heard story. Okay. I have heard of such Tom Bombadil. Only in passing. He is an enigmatic man. Or man may even be not quite true. Some say he is imbued with special abilities. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, Belgo kind of makes some, like... <clears throat> Goldberry will... Come back to the table with more food and cups and what have you, and go, Oh, uh, yes, he is the master of wood, water, and hill. I and then see. proceed to go back out. Dairy doll, make... maridol, <laughs> I'm going to make a plate of eggs and toast and whatever's there. Start snacking. Yeah, there's, there's butter, fresh, <clears throat> freshly turned butter. 
fresh bread. I'll look over at the dwarf, and I'll just be like, you, you say that you do not trust the wood. I assume that you, similarly to me, do not then recall why you would have been in this wood, correct? Do you have any memory at all of what you were doing before you came here? I have no business in a forest. <laughs> yes. Nor I. It is my business, my task, for my family's honor. I was seeking um, some of the drake holds in the north. Mm. Um, what is the north, just for my aspect, Cody, what is the north use? So I would think that basically <clears throat> I was thinking about it today. So the idea behind Velg is that he is trying to find one of the Dwarven Rings of Power, and yep. he's trying to find it for his family. So basically, I'm thinking he is some sort of distant cousin of Dane Ironfoot okay. over in Erebor, because he's mm -hmm. an Erebor dwarf, yep. and he's trying to find one of the rings. So at this time, they know that four of them were either destroyed or consumed by dragons. Correct. Two are in Sauron's hands. Correct. And then Thror, uh, Thrain's father, had a ring that was supposedly lost in Moria. Yep. Yeah, because it went to Dane. And that would, yes. So I don't know. Basically, I think my guy is probably trying to find maybe one of the rings that the dragons consumed. Okay. Would you also be thinking of, of riddles or looking into any information of possibly anything? Because, you know... Moria has not really gotten contact with as many people as as late. They've been right. quiet. Right. Um would you think yeah, that there I would think... be like the Misty Mountains because it could that could house any of the Drakes? You're kind of checking that sure. whole that whole line is what I'm getting. Yeah, I, I, I think my guy would be traveling from Erebor through the Misty Mountains up to the Blue Mountains. And then he would probably try to, you know, he would just keep going out into what was formerly Angmar and things like that, because that's where the, the Drakes would have been. Oh, man, I love myself. I knew exactly where you were going. <laughs> I, I, was just, I was just curious to make sure I planned right, and fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I could be of assistance. <laughs> All right. So... Would you would you explain that you're like so you were probably let's say you had heard something um the reason why you would be on this side of the Misty Mountains is you possibly mm. heard something and you were actually traveling up to Agmar. Okay. Even though it is dangerous cuz at this time the Witch King still presides yeah over that area. Yeah. Um and it is not very settled through there yeah. at all. Um, yeah, Velg is more a man of action and yep. less of planning. So he's like, I'm going to go win back some glory for the dwarves. So that's kind of what he's about. Yeah. Okay. So it might not be the greatest idea, which kind of like, kind of like Thor when he went to Moria mm -hmm. was like, Hey, let's just go the two of us to Moria. <laughs> yep. We'll figure it out as we do it. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm so sorry to interrupt. That was a conversation between Steve and you. You yeah, just so, stated that you're looking for relics of, of the Dwarven lineage. Yeah, that I'm, I'm trying to find uh, relics related to my line. And I have interest in Dwarven things. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I just... I, as, as you do, find it curious that you would wind up here. It's... I, I, as well, I wasn't too far from Dale, last I recall. I was heading in a westbound through the woods, heading towards the mountains themselves. I would have gone past the, seeked passage past the elves, and then gone across from there. So you would have gone through the, uh, the upper top of Berkwood. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just been kind of heading away from there. 
I'm not sure how I landed with the rest of you. Sounds like we weren't too far off from each other, Master Dwarf. Name's Saul, by the way. Saul, you have the look of a Lake Town man. Yes. Tired and old. (laughs) (laughs) Well met, then, gray hair. Tell me, were you in the battle of five armies? Maybe we clashed at some point. I think not. (laughs) Otherwise, I would not be talking to you. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) I'd be talking to your corpse. That's right. (laughs) Derry doll, maridol, ding doll. So, yeah, I would introduce that. Yes, I am. My name is Velg uh, Breakerbeard. I knew that was going to be my favorite part of it. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that's all you're doing. <laughs> what about the elf? The other three compatriots here. What are your names? Known as Hanmir. Hen here? Hanmir. H A N M I R. Hanmir. What's your story? friend i'm uh i am one who has chosen a life of uh protection of uh defending the land from the dark forces that would seek to sow the seeds of chaos in this realm Uh, that's understandable yes they are many and scattered throughout and i seek to Make sure that they are known only to me and not to the kingdoms of man. I can understand your sentiments exactly. I do the same where I'm from. Mm. It's a good, good to good to know that there are others out there that are pursuing the same goals as I. Yes. Not as young and as spry as you, though. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> is, this, is this guy going to be okay? I've just fought too much in my life. Too many bones have broken and been laid out too many times. I Maybe say, Greybeard, do we have to get you a cart? <laughs> Probably, <laughs> Master Dwarf. Probably. <laughs> Velg, right? That's how you pronounce it, Velg. Yep, Velg. Probably Velg. You'll be carrying me before this is over. <laughs> I think not. Okay, I'll so hire us is... a pony. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, just like leave you here, I guess. <laughs> See, what was your name again? Hanmir. H A N M I R. Okay. Hanmi. Frank, did you say your character's name? Uh, yeah, it's. Well, it's Saul for short, but it's Tor Salmander. Ooh. Oh. Okay. What about you, Mr. Elf? So, Neil, you tell me if this doesn't fly for you. Um, but so my thought was, I, I hail from the lands of Valinor, far to the east. I have come during this third age to see and participate in the last great evil. Some say this is the last elves will see of Middle-earth, so I desire to see it before it is gone. That works. <laughs> I have so Then no he's idea. probably <laughs> he's probably a elf of bearing, of significant bearing yes. in comparison to some of the elves we've seen. Because he has the light of the trees in him. Exactly. Right. So, like, that adds into when you saw him awaken and stretch and everything like that. You have never seen an elf similar yeah. in nature. So he's got, he's got, like, a little bit of a bearing, like, Galadriel. Exactly. Yep. What an interesting story. Pretty fancy elf man there. <laughs> And you, Riddlemaster, what's your tale? 
Uh, hello, uh, my name is, uh, Mungo Rumble. I'm a newly, uh, uh, honed Riddle Master. I heard tale from Mr. Mungo. Baggins of Bag End about a little Riddle Goblin, and it got me thinking, what if I go, uh, go get all the riddles in the world? Master Baggins is well respected in the halls of Alamor. I... What's your character's name, by the way, Bob? I, I, I swear, Frank's character is just gonna like keel okay. over. Did he start the game wounded? Like <laughs> sixty-two. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give a little backstory to him? No, so he was involved. So he was involved no. in the no. battles. He's, he's 62. He's, he's been, old. Yeah, he's old as shit. He should not be alive at all. Yeah, so you're a man of Dale. You're 62 and you've seen combat. You're Yeah, you're a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when Smog fell on Lake Town. <laughs> Surely you can't be 62. <laughs> he is, though. Are you a god, sir? He should be. Have, have you seen me? Like. <laughs> <laughs> He's dying every day. He just like gets up and breaks a hip. Oh, there's his adventure. He's done. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So last night, like everyone was trying to figure out if Neil's character was actually a walking corpse, and today we have to figure out if Frank's character is yeah. a walking corpse. <laughs> he actually is a walking corpse. Yeah, he's a ring wraith. He just I want to finish that damn dungeon. We have to finish yeah. that dungeon. We will. He's a ring wraith. <laughs> But uh, Robert, what was your character's name? Yeah, he never said his name ever. <laughs> He's a uh, Durandir. Durandir. Duran Duran. Do you make interesting music about sandstorms? <laughs> <laughs> Not <Doreen. laughs> yeah, he's he's Duran Duran dear. Yeah. First of his Her name. Her name is Rio, and she moves across the sand so far away <laughs> from Valinor. I couldn't get away. <laughs> couldn't get away. <laughs> It, cons um, it concerns me, Elf, that from so far away you too have heard of the darkness that threatens to envelop Middle-earth. People are leaving these lands. <laughs> Indeed. It is no surprise. None. Hmm. The same darkness that would take me from my path and put me in such a place. <laughs> no offense to the lady of the house, of course. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you're fine. After Velk has already eaten, like, two plates of food. <laughs> yeah. You, as you are all discussing, you will hear now a different voice coming from outside of the cabin. Cabin. A, a, the, the voice inside has... The cabin. <laughs> the, inside the cabin. <laughs> pop, pop, baby. <laughs> you don't roll around in the ancient wood and don't get capping. <laughs> Um, kneecap in. We are in the Shire, so it is it is it is technically the hood. <laughs> Full eyes on screen. Everybody donates extra life. Oh yeah, That's what there's happens. a doggo. That's what happens. Bull eyes on screen. Now everybody needs to donate. Oh, is it mandatory when he's on screen? It is when he's on screen. Everybody has to donate money. Is it mandatory? <laughs> you look him in the face, Frank, and you tell him you're not gonna donate money. Love you, bye, bye. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> um, but you will hear, coming from the wood, a deeper bellow of a voice. Singing, Gary Dole, Mari Dole, Ding Dolo. Old Tom Bombadil is a merry fellow. Bright blue jacket. The husband. And his boots are yellow. Is he and... singing? Is he is he singing in unison with the woman that we're yes. hanging out with? <laughs> I'm I no longer think that she. Yeah. 
They are. I'm gonna put already... a point on the table and slide it to the hot end to shake my head. <laughs> I, I know. I no longer think this woman is crazy. I am now terrified that we are in some kind of demon hunt. <laughs> Belg will not understand the whole duet thing, and he's just gonna be like. Well, it, <laughs> looking on in, in terror, it would have it yeah. would have almost happened naturally. So, like, she would have started <clears throat> the Derry Doll, Mary Doll, and he, you would have ended up hearing his voice mix in as well. Yeah, this is, I, this is some weird magic. Shit. Can I join in? I'm gonna pull out my. Can I roll and like my song check and thing. join in? I will allow that. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, what were you saying you were doing? I'm going to pull up my lute and start tuning it to get ready to play along with them. <laughs> that is also fun. So I rolled uh, for song, right? So 14. Ooh, I just got it. Uh, so, And I rolled a 6. So um, yeah, I hit 14 and I got a 6. Nice. Um, so you surprisingly, like at first, everybody thought you would be off key as soon as you, they started realizing you were singing, but you are matching their, the, the third <laughs> aspect. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Belg's like, yeah, here comes the elf. He's going to start singing. It's going to suck. <laughs> so how does the rolling thing work? As long again? as the hobbit doesn't join, I think we'll be fine. Oh no, I'm joining. Um, so, <laughs> so when you go to roll, what's your? I or... have two two things in song. Okay, does not have the like. It's not favored. Efficiency, but it's not favored, but I just okay. have two in song. So you'll roll one d twelve, and two okay. d sixes, and you're just trying to beat the technical score. The uh, whatever the the TN for uh, gotcha for that attribute. Um, I did not beat it. <laughs> I got a thirteen out of sixteen. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like <laughs> you're you're tuning it, and you just you just can't find the you can't find the note you're looking for. But I'm still playing with all my heart. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the good stuff. <laughs> You're playing the one song that you know. It has nothing to do with this, but yellow boots. <laughs> and uh I think never have I seen like such a strange sight. <laughs> and I've seen I've seen some things. <laughs> Nor so, have I. <laughs> I'm gonna need that pipe, friend. <laughs> so as um, Duran Duran <laughs> starts joining <laughs> in, and uh, Goldberry is still like moving around, but like as soon as uh, Robert, your character, joins in, she like kind of gets a little bit excited. Because it's somebody else like joining in on the song, and she goes, "Oh, look, you know, <laughs> yes, keep singing." And um, you will notice entering the cottage door a man who is has very thick brown hair that is covered in a crown of autumn leaves, dressed. A blue jacket. Yellow boots. Oh That's shit, it. it's real. Yellow boots. <laughs> <laughs> no pants, Neil? No pants. <laughs> <laughs> He's just free balling with those boots on. <laughs> A man of culture. A man of culture. He's got pants. And as soon as he enters, he he will also look in a merry mood, and he will he will see that one of the guests is also singing. He will also notice a hobbit trying to play in tune, but be excited about it. But he doesn't address you guys until him and Goldberry meet, and he goes, "Here's my pretty lady." 
and kind of like kisses her hand um and then turns to the group and goes ah you are awakened this is good i was worried i did not uh find you in yep i'm here i guess it is dangerous what the darkness can do in this era of Oh, well. Can but I alas, do... luckily I was picking more lilies for golden, goldberry. Tell us. Find us, kind sir. What was that, Robert? What did you... How did he find us? Ah, oh, I was... Wandering, surprisingly, outside of the ancient wood, and came across many of you in different areas. I Sometimes when I wander, I, I lose track of where I am. I get lost in song. It is amazing, as you... Um, but yes, I decided to wander outside the, bo the borders of this beautiful wood. Each area I went, I seemed to wander upon, leave, and he's going to point over to, to your character. Ah, yes, I found you seemingly ripe, full of poison, as I believe it was over in that forest. There's many spiders now wandering its but no. I was able to... Give you some good tea and ah, fine now. And, and you, the the hobbits, the, the the hardy folk. I always enjoy the hobbits. They are interesting to me. Their cares are different. But uh, you, honestly, you you seem to have tripped and hit your head on a root while you were leaving the Shire. <laughs> Didn't make it very far. <laughs> This will be the furthest I've ever gone. This will be the furthest I've ever gone from. Oh shoot! <laughs> I believe. I believe when I picked you up, you were, you were rambling about how, uh, how Bilbo Baggins had told you. You know, you, sometimes you need to kick your feet, and you kicked a root instead. It was something along those lines. Otherwise, you'd lose where you were going. It was a lot of nonsense, really. But here you are, I put some, some of Goldberry salve on you, and your head looks as ripe as ever. That reminds me, I have a riddle about a root. Hey, what has roots taller than trees, and yet never grows? <laughs> the mountain. Oh, he got it! This guy! <laughs> this guy! <laughs> you would know about mountains, though, dwarf man. I and and you, Ranger, us. It is dangerous times that you and your people normally. But Indeed. luckily for you, I was doing an old patch of uh, of forest that I knew up in uh, your culture's land, and uh, stumbled upon you in. In this grove, it was interesting. But not awake, so brought you back here. Kidnapping, okay. Taking a nap and he kidnapped me. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> what an asshole! You don't question. He <laughs> kidnapped just about everybody. Yeah. So yeah, I actually was fine. I mean, he just was like, oh, I went for a walk and found all you guys and brought you yeah. here. So like, I was. I was tracking an, I was tracking a powerful hey, monster. When you're when you're basically a demigod, you can pretty much do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, you do whatever you want. Yeah. And uh, and then you, Master Dwarf, it is dangerous to your journey that you take. I know many of your people rush into certain areas. Look at uh, the new king 
to the mountain. Lucked out in some endeavors, many have said. I am not sure. I was not there. But four trifles. A little too. But, I uh, don't understand your meaning, master of the house. But when you venture north, darkness, darkness, winter, be wary. Only when you have a strong bond, your group will fight darkness. Then we will be bonded! <laughs> are you saying that we are to go together somewhere? Many I have ran into. Many things have. The hobbits are relatively new that I've had to experience. Many of your people at at many wrong creatures, but none have I ever encountered in ways as each when I found you, making me more intrigued. But what? Do you sing bells? What is your factor for being dangerous? Backed by spiders? You tripping over roots? I mean, that, that's just normal. But that's for, just a, normal. <laughs> for a hobbit to wander, the last one I knew of created a wonderful but was not of a normal hobbit stature and really only did it to protect his land and his kinfolk. I'm just seeking riddles, you know. The riddle kind. You got any good riddles, yellow boot man? <sighs> I'm sure I did at one point. Now... I get lost in the woods. Okay. But darkness is creeping back in. And I fear that even my ancient realm will possibly succumb to this area. But thus, I would just move on. You? Who would mess with you with those boots? Also, darkness. There's no darkness here in the Shire. Hmm. It is interesting. It will be a time that the Shire folk will depict the fate of the Earth. Really? Have you seen them? I mean, look at me. Or be enslaved. This riddle is nothing for you to worry about. Well, that, well now I'm gonna. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> but... You're talking all cryptic and whatnot. But alas, many of you can assist this world in ways you do not even comprehend. I decided to leave my nephew in charge of everything back in Dale. There's no reason for me to be there anymore after all the battles and things that I've had to do to keep my people safe and those around it. I'm nearing death's door anyway, so... It sure sounds hell? like it. <laughs> so what the hell, right? Oh, I like your spirit, sir. Do you wish for us to protect the realm of man from the darkness that pervades all corners, including the Shire? Huh. 
I will gladly do so. Like a young ring is not just man we try to protect, but as much as this, he turns over and picks up a lily. As much as this lily here, all perish. Darkness. And prior to this, yes, he may have been cryptic, but he was always like somewhat happy in demeanor. You, as he talks about this darkness, you will feel as if the whole area starts feeling the same emotions that Tom Bombadil produces. So you feel despair soaking in. Feel glow. I feel... shed a tear. <laughs> like even your glow, you feel in yourself, Robert, that your own like connection is sh right. like starts shrinking. Right. Yeah, I nod. I nod at his uh, at his statement, and I say, I I understand that, but uh, the darkness of the world attempts to pervade the realm of man far more than anything. And if the, if, the, if the kingdoms of men fall, then there is nothing to stop them from wiping out everything. Man is the one force that stands to f successfully fend off the darkness that would seek to consume this realm. Just men, I... Did men no, we, stand before we dwarves, Morgoth? We dwarves know nothing of suffering one? at the hands of the evil powers. <laughs> right. Nor elves, am, am I, if I'm not mistaken by your actions, I'm going to draw my sword <laughs> Shadow's Bane and set it on the table. <laughs> uh, should I go? <laughs> no. I meant I meant no disrespect, dwarf. I or, or Sir Elf. I I I merely spoke of of the general cultures of of those who the darkness would seek to destroy. I was just speaking in the general oh, terms. It seeks an end to all of us. Indeed, your plight is not your own, but it is all of ours. I, it I, seems pretty heavy. I just like uh, really I just, just like <laughs> I'm gonna start that back out of the room. I'm gonna just pat my hand on the table. Come all, come all. We all want the same thing, don't we? Apparently, do, do we. Gold, Goldberry is gonna be, come up behind your character, Justin, as you like are about to like push your chair back and stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and she will. She will put. Like freaked out. That happened. She, she will put. She puts an arm around you. And start singing. Well, this is the end for all the <laughs> Um, but no, she will rest her hand on your shoulder, and you will feel an overwhelming like sense of comfort from this, and she will say. It, it is not a plight on man or elf, puppet or dwarf, but a blight on what you all are of. Many for you have fought in their darkness. And many after you fight and more. But if a shred of light can prevail, overwhelming darkness becomes the brightest spot. Mary doll, <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> And you just feel great. She <laughs> imbues you with the best. Oh, I love this song. <laughs> you finally yeah. know this the tune. Jam. You finally know the <laughs> tune to play yeah. on boots. your Yellow instrument. <laughs> <laughs> he's still, he's still the boots with the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> 
the man with the code, the code. <laughs> the whole cottage looking Never. at him. <laughs> he hit the belt. Next thing you know. Next thing you know. Oh my God, low, low, low. <laughs> Protect our door and fight all the trolls, the trolls. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, so she, she kind of gives this, this speech. I'm dying right now, just thinking about that. <laughs> Is there some purpose that you would put us all towards? And this will be... Something but... specific. There is... All this talk of shadows and darkness... Let me see my enemy. This would be your greatest journey. That's why I've taken it. If you Tried f- to help my people. If you fail, your line will end. But if you succeed, stem a tide of darkness. Many of you have talked about where you were going, where you were from, and what your quest is. But you have yet to see the connection that I, while wandering, have figured. The five of you, as unlikely as it may be, (laughs) but let's be honest, you know stories of good old Tom Bombadil. This is the perfect group for me to send on. Now, are you familiar with Arnor and the history of the North? I'm sure you are, Sir Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Steve, no fucking clue. Yeah, his, no, his I character? Yeah, yeah, yeah should have some concepts. Absolutely knows. I I didn't know that was a place until you said it. Perhaps I could show you one of my maps. <laughs> Northman. <laughs> yes. Just point it out on this map, Northman. Yeah. So Cody and I have a shit ton of maps each, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's part of my oh, no, part of my useful last... items. Same here. <laughs> the last place of the evil Melkor. <laughs> yes, I'm. I am well aware of the uh, history of this place, but um, our elf friend appears to be from uh, a faraway land. So, so the elf, the elf would probably know the Hobbit. On the other oh, hand. I... <laughs> Yeah, I would know everything about Arnor. Arnor was like where a lot of the elves first landed. In many, many of many of the elves stemmed tides of war to keep Arnor mm. continuing until it finally collapsed. Like so there was some yeah. uh, like Robert's character would know of many of the elven heroes that were birthed out of these war campaigns. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Showing my hand here. <laughs> it's but, all twos. So, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, this is fine. So, I love that Steve picked the one race that you like. probably should know some stuff <laughs> yeah. about if you're going to come from like, the northern lands as a ranger. The Dunedain, huh? So, yeah. right. I bet that Numenor. Yeah, that, yeah, that guy. <laughs> that so, yeah. Steve, a, you know... He cool. He did you, a thing. You know the plot of Aragorn. You know he is the king. Yes, yes, yes. He is a Dunedain ranger. Yes, He is yes, one yes. of the last. There's yeah, like only... Yeah. He's the captain of the Dunedain exactly. rangers. Exactly. Right, so right. there is only like a few hundred Dunedain rangers left. Yeah. yeah. At this point, that... we will say there is probably closer to above 500. Okay. Because and they... It... Go ahead, Cody. Well, the thing is, too, is that they all have varying degrees of the Dunedain blood. Exactly. Because of, because of all the fallen kingdoms and all the intermarriages and stuff, 
So like Boromir and Faramir have some Numenorian blood in them, but it's so diminished yep. that they don't have the long life or anything like that. Yeah. Whereas Aragorn is is pretty pure on the Dúnedain. He's as pure he's as able... any as that's any currently of the rest. out there. Yep, exactly. Yeah. He is the purest because one. he lives like two hundred, where like typically they could live to like five. Um, back in Numenor, so yep. so pretty much the empire of the Numenor people goes through several aspects of being attacked and besieged. Um, well, it was hubris that it inevitably forced them to go to Middle Earth. Yes, what are you talking about? <laughs> <Good quote. laughs> hey man, you know it'd be really cool if y'all just you know kind of went south. That'd be real. Co- that'd be real great. I'm gonna. Uh, I think that'd be that'd be an interesting story to tell someday. <laughs> so, but while they were there, they went through many different attacks. This is where the Witch King of Agmar got his name, mm-hmm. who believe is believed in certain aspects to be of the Numenorn bloodline. It's it's one theory is that he got the ring. Sauron gave one of the Numenors a ring, and that mm. is where the Witch King was birthed. Yeah, I I know they say that out of the nine, I think three of them are Numenorians. Yeah, and the Witch and King. The Witch is King is like the greatest king. The of tallest, them. the yeah. the tallest, the most aggressive is everybody. Pretty much knows. The name Witch King. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, especially you, Steve. Because this is the person who ends up destroying the Empire. Okay. Yeah. Good to just completely annihilating Arnor. Yeah. The Northern Kingdom. Over a good amount of time, but completely destroys it. Yeah. The Witch King is like two at least two thousand years old, or okay. if not um yeah at least 2000 years old um so has outlived the Numenorean empire has formed cuz once the Numenorean empire split it formed into two different sections one sided with the witch king and then proceeded to get and then the other side proceeded to get destroyed by the witch king even more um so the north has become a Pretty much barren wasteland. Nobody really lives up there because of um, the uh... that perceives character who lives up there. Yep, as a Norton Dunedain. Exactly. <laughs> so the only people, the only people who end up living up there is the Dunedain Rangers, which yeah. actually which end up I'm... fighting in the war. The Lord of the Rings towards the end. The last of yeah. the Rangers actually help Aragorn. Uh, yeah, great which is which is why I'm so confused about why I'm down here in this forest because that's very far south. Of... As you are starting not, to not recount, so much because... hold on, okay. it's not. It's not as that far. as you start to recount, you actually know that this old forest is close to the Barrow Downs, which you would know is an ancient Numenor burial ground. Okay. Okay. So it is not not far at all. Okay. The part two that you should know, Steve, just for your own for just for your own edification for how you're gonna like for your playing your character, mm-hmm. is that the Dunedain are kind of like silent guardians for yeah. Ariador. So they're kind of looking after Bree, they're looking after the Shire, they're looking after the different free folk in this area okay. without being directly involved with them yeah that's kind of that's kind of what more or less just in the wilds killing monsters and and stopping evil from getting to this place so protecting this area from like the the north where like all of um melkor's original armies like came from because the north is still like populated with like orcs and shit that's kind of how i read it in the book is that they're just out there protecting yeah so you pretty much your your troop Runs the border of the Breelands, the Shire, and everything okay. like this of the old empire to gotcha. try and make sure it also does not fall. Okay. 
All right, that um, makes sense. So that's a that's a lot of the aspects of so you being down here is makes okay. can make perfect sense. Makes sense. Okay. Um, you could have been Good on patrol, know. got attacked, ambushed, whatever it may have been. Okay. Um. But when Tom Bombadil, as far as you know, when Tom Bombadil found you, he could not wake you at all. So he brought mm-hmm. you back here to give you attention. Sure. And now that you've told the lore for the, for the sake of our audience, of course, <laughs> in case they don't know what's um, up. But yes. The story. So that like that is your your main goal is to preserve what is left. Correct. Right? Is is what I would get. Yes. Um Cody's goal is to preserve as as we've been talking about is to preserve and bring back his his line. You know, bring it back to what it once was. Of course, Robert's character is just kind of okay. feeling out the last aspects of Middle Earth under an elven presence. Um, you know, him is like all the guys during like World War One or World War Two who are like, "Oh, this is going to be like a short fight, and well, everybody's leaving Middle Earth." So he wants to see it before right. essentially he can't see it again. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's cool. Um. Frank, your character, you, as much as you've passed everything on, you, you are also in turmoil of, is this the end? I feel like there is something else for me to do, but you adventured out, right? Is kind of the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, he's pretty much, uh, he, he gave everything to his, his nephew. He's the last of his name. His sister is obviously the mother of mm-hmm. his nephew. Um, he was he would take care of the family and whatnot, but he was a, a a warden, so he never really stayed home. He would just bring things back for the family. Yeah, and eventually he just knew he didn't want his nephew or his kids or any of that to follow in his footsteps. So he handed everything off, and he decided to leave because he doesn't know why he's still alive at sixty two, fighting yeah. the way he does, but he just knows that there's something left. And that's the only reason he's holding on. And deep down, Justin, your character knows that riddles one day <laughs> solve he <used> everything. <laughs> will solve a great will solve one a day, problem that a great catastrophe not for all upon. One day the hobbits will solve the greatest riddle of all. <laughs> A box without hinges, key or lid, yet inside golden <laughs> treasure is hid. I heard that one. <laughs> um, and Tom Bombadil will kind of recount this, like each of your stories, as I just did, back to you and say, these are not just coincidences that a party of this nature would meet. But instead, I believe many of you must wander north to the treacherous areas of our north. While you are there, you will find the Enton Moor something of great balance. Do you have my steed? Huh. Yes, they are just outside. It's a nag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my steed's the only thing that's that's new. <laughs> I suppose uh, we should probably figure out our strategy, right, friends? Figure out what we need to do to get there safely. But we will be deal with what we deal with. I agree. That is a. We will be. Some may say. Council. But uh, almost a 
patron for to be able to use as we may yes. So in mechanics of the game, your patrons are Tom Bobadil and Lady Oldberry. Art. Um, so the favorite callings for those are Warden Treasure Hunters. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Love um, it! <laughs> <laughs> fellowship points of plus two. So you can spend Fellowship to call Tom and Goldberry's intervention anywhere in Tom's country. Um, that is a very big statement because even though Tom Bombadil's country is the old forest, um, it's also like all of Middle Earth besides <laughs> like Mordor. <laughs> Um, I would even argue Mordor is this country. Like Jesus, pretty much all of Middle it is. Earth. Like, it's it, just, it, it is. <laughs> it is. I would just state, like, for the aspects of how I figure it, um, like, we're not it would... going to Mordor anytime soon, though. So that's, I mean, what, that's that. what you think. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Level one fighting Sauron. <laughs> The <laughs> yeah, the item of balance that we're finding is a portal to Mount, uh, to Mount Doom. <laughs> yeah, if you guys succeed, now the quest for the ring literally is just Frodo going to this portal, which then brings him right into the mountain. Uh, you're real the... tough inside your tower of Beradur. <laughs> <laughs> but how tough are you against my axe? <laughs> Pretty tough. He just like snaps like, his finger and just like explode. I would also feel <laughs> like Robert's character would have been in <laughs> that battle <laughs> somewhere because uh, you're that ancient. <laughs> are, are you like a Gilgalad type deal? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, like so. Like I, I would say my character, my character wasn't here for all of like the pretty much like the second age. Okay, because most of the first age is all like elves, kind of going over to middle earth right yeah. finding men and then the, they're setting up all their kingdoms there the men come about that's how the numenorians are like they even get numenor in the first place is through that whole uh the For first helping the, the elves. first age yeah helping the elves and right the God. right so like he has a lot more knowledge of the first age than he like than he would of like the second age okay. um, and then even the third age to some extent but like he would know about it because it's not like i mean Story He's would have been told. Fox, so. Yeah. What age was he born? He was born like well, so most of the elves, like the older elves, are all yeah. like part of the Valar. They've all been around for like since the beginning of time. Yeah. Are you a are you a Vala elf or are you a Noldor? Tindor? No, I'm a Vala elf. Oh, okay. So you're you're legit. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so he's basically legit. like so he's I, basically like pure fucking light in front of us, is basically. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So you're old as 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 time. Pretty so much. like when the when only person elves, older like, is like, Tom Bombadil. <laughs> yeah. Well, like my character is pretty old. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around. I've met Eru. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so like technically Galadriel is the only other one. Like is like the only elf, or I can't say only one, but. Like one of the few elves who is originally from yeah. Valinor, right? Like even her husband Celebor is not from. Oh yeah, Valinor. Yeah, um, because she's she's part of the the Noldor that left. With, origi with, yeah, and so there was Aenor a split and all them, but she wasn't part of the kinslaying. So she's not right. diminished well, like them, but she's not a part of the kinslaying. But they had a choice, right? They like some of them were told like you can come back or you can go to middle yeah. She basically like, she went to middle she Earth. decided to go to middle earth and make a make her own kingdom basically because yep. do her own thing. We're doing real lore stuff right now, yeah. so we don't need deep to go lore, that far. Deep lore, baby. No, yeah. Steve, Steve needs to learn. <laughs> He's always yeah. trying. Sixty percent of this, sixty percent of this to know. is going to be. We're not going to get to combat. It's all going to be like. I just wanted to know how old Robert was, and he goes into this whole yeah. war, and I'm like, 
I know. I read the you guys, you guys have you heard a bunch of orcs on the field. Now, Steve, so, so you know the orcs come from the elves and whatever. Like, yeah, okay. Like, oh, don't wait, <laughs> Steve. You're gonna find a whole new troll species that has not even been experienced by Middle Earth yet. <laughs> Great. So, so, Frank, if this answers your question, technically my character is really not supposed to be here either, because like the elves are like um, are all returning to Valinor at this point. He was an elf that stored away on a ship to come to Middle Earth to experience it. Pretty much. There was no more ships going back to Middle Earth except to pick up more elves and leave. Okay. So right. he's a renegade kind of, elf. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of he's funny because it's like <laughs> so many of the elves, like, like even like Kierden, the ship, right? Like he has to go mm-hmm. back to Valinor at some point or he will diminish forever. Because yeah. he's never seen the light. Right. And they have to. The elves so have of... to see the light. Right. Because they're immortal. That's where they get their immortality right. from. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, like, he, it's only a matter of time before Kierden's like, I have to leave. Mm-hmm. Which right. is why he leaves with Gandalf and all them, you know? Steve, did you? Yes, Steve. I, and then I, that's I, when Viggo Mortensen broke even... his toe. So, Frank, if, if you want to know how old I am, I don't even know how old I am, if that okay. makes sense. <laughs> that's that's the better answer. Well, I mean, <laughs> that makes if sense. If I was to quantify the age of that elf to the age of that man, I'd say that about the same. There's even some speculation that like Tom Tom Bombaldi like kind of is error. To <laughs> Bombaldi. Some yeah. Hey, Bombaldi. Yeah. Well, like that's the thing. Nobody <laughs> nobody has a clue. Nobody knows if it is if that is him, if he's just something else. Right. Like right. everybody just has heard stories in every age, every like aspect well, of him just appearing. Yogalad and Elrond and Gandalf and I believe Saruman all talked about it and were like, Tom can never have the ring. <laughs> well, <'cause> <laughs> because he would, be, he would be a terrible person to have it because he doesn't give a shit about it. Yep. And right, it'll get lost. Right. Like, and they were just like, um, it's in that argument where they said, well, Tom was first. Like, he was here before everybody else. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that he's not, like, they don't know. What is how that happened? Are, yeah, or, like, <laughs> like what is here for? Yeah, yeah. He's like the epitome of like completely lawful neutral. He's yeah. just like he is Middle Earth essentially. Like yeah, in that was, that's uh, one of persona. the theories. He's just Middle Earth. I you. think yeah, he's like a, he's like a crazy land spirit. You know, it's just right. like yep. Well, and that's like the the concept, right? Is is why Tom Bombadil, like in a sense, wouldn't care about the ring. Because he cares overall about like just Middle Earth's balance. Technically, you need to have darkness to to push the light and things of that nature. Like, there's going to always be that fighting is balance. You, you know, one of I the mean? things one of the things that I saw that I liked it was a cool theory was it was talking about when the when the Ainur and Eru made their music and they were creating everything. That when Melkor first started, it hit the Discord in the song that it brought about like changes and it made things happen. And they think that there's these um Tolkien talks about these nameless things under Moria when uh mm-hmm. Gandalf and the Balrog fall underneath Durin's yes. bridge. They talk about these nameless evils that live underneath the in and the that are like in the water. that are older than Middle Earth and like they're older than like time or whatever. And basically the theory is that they were created when that first music was happening, just like on Goliath, just and they think that maybe Tom would be like another like the opposite of that. He's like just a very powerful good spirit that is just kind of outside of the realm of the normal hierarchy and structure. Um so let's let's say, Robert, for your age, maybe maybe you were birthed around the aspect of so this is the chronology of the Undying Lands. Maybe you were birthed around the aspect of the Numenor Elves Alliance, right? Maybe a few thousand years prior to that. So that would be sure. 
30,600 years on the calendar was when you were birthed. We are currently almost, uh, so let's, let's say, let's say you're closer to the, closer to the fight of the Noldar, right? So closer okay. to in between 20 and 30,000 years. Valerian age. So you would have been at the end of Age of Trees, beginning of First Age of Sun. According, yeah, I was thinking I would I would have been born after the Cimmerals were stolen and all of that stuff. So perfect, that was great. So word prime. I'm glad we're on the same page. So it is about currently now thirty thousand. Uh, 36,580 Valerian age. So you are somewhere... I'm just going to turn to Frank and be like, technically 36,501. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, so you would be roughly almost like 8,000 to 10,000 years. Yeah. That's about what I figured. <laughs> 8, 8 to 10,000 as opposed to 62 man years. <laughs> yeah. That's... So we stop counting. It's about equal. Well, like, yeah. Good. Every uh, every uh, ten uh, years uh, is about a, a thousand years for an elf. <laughs> <laughs> it's like dog years, you know. Yeah. Um. So. All right. I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> I'm glad we could go into this lore dump. Extraordinarily important to know if you, the age of the elf. <laughs> if you would like for more lore dumps, please donate funny to extra life and i will mm -hmm. record a video of talking about and middle yeah. alternatively if you want them to stop doing lore dumps please donate and we can make that happen <laughs> as well i'm 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 sorry i will respect you for donating but it'll never happen <laughs> if you would like to watch I'm me trying. and i tag team steve with lore dumps <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to see how fast I can leave a conversation, please. Steve, you are contractually obligated to be here. Yeah, you can't. I am, I am not. <laughs> I signed All no right, such let's document. All right, let's move forward. We spent a lot of time talking about lore. Yeah, so. yeah we did, didn't we? <laughs> didn't we? Steve, you used that attitude here, and there's going to be and some hell to pay. It's just like nodding off all this conversation. <laughs> why, <laughs> why, do you mean, fucking, why do you think Tower actually takes three years yeah right i mean i enjoy it but unfortunately i don't know how much like poor our viewers no, they, yeah. i don't care i don't care about steve and justin i care no, about our don't. viewers just, and if our viewers <laughs> like it i will continue <laughs> even if i just came here to slay some dragons and maybe they, kill a spider even if the viewers don't like it it's still going to happen oh not as much <laughs> i'll, I'll reserve Tell us um, more, Tom. Tell us but, more. So, Tom Bombadil and... In the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning, I was very alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all my songs came from. Um, but yeah, so Tom Bombadil and Lady Goldberry are your patrons. So they are the people to assist you. And this is now kind of your base of operations if you wish to use it. Um, so Tom Bombadil's cabin in the old wood will assist you. Um, so Uncle Tom's cabin. Who was it, man? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, <laughs> So yep, that's that's how that'll work out. Um, and he informs you that to the north, through um, you'll kind of have to. You can decide to either go through the Barrow Downs. He will explain to you that the Barrow Downs can be dangerous, but can also possibly aid you. In your quest, as it'll have knowledge similar to what you will be going into um, the further you head into Arnor. Um, and then you could decide 
to go through Bree, or just kind of outskirt Bree, go through the Weather Hills, up into the Entmores, if you wanted to do it straight by land, or you could follow the East Road and then cut up, um, what river? The Entmores. Yeah. The Entmores. Yes. <laughs> um, Bree? <laughs> More and, ants? <laughs> all right. <laughs> we find the ant wives. Yeah. <laughs> They've been lost. They didn't years. go south. They went north. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you can follow the river going up past uh, Rundur. And uh, go that way. You have many aspects to, of travel. I've come to see all of this land. Hmm? Let us take the long road. <laughs> um, yeah, Tom Bombadil would state that now there is many different agents of the darkness that move on road that you may... What did you say, Cody? I said darkness. <laughs> yeah. Um, many agents of darkness that Unity. will now move through much like anybody else passing. Um, so the roads actually may be more dangerous. As a ranger of these lands, would I know the safest route? You would, would per- you the- would prefer to go cut through the wilds, okay. no doubt. That's what I want to do. I want to take the long, well, the like when I said road, I just meant longest path. Like yep. I want to see everything. Yeah, pretty much. You guys is, I would say, discussing amongst yourselves. You would think Bree is your last stop. Of civilization, and then it is wilds until you get up to the Etten Moors. Indeed. We'll have to stop in Bree for supplies, I'd imagine, but I too would like to cut through the wild to avoid curious eyes as to what we may be doing. That is the wise decision. Well, I guess I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> what wacky adventures will I fall to a fall? Old Mojo. Such, a, such a, uh, a dichotomy between Justin's character from last night yeah. versus today. Right, right. <laughs> Where's like Noxus who does not stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just makes one liner. Yep. And riddles. I'm just here. Hanging out. All right. It reminds so, me of your character from uh, Call of Cthulhu, the the navy oh, guy yeah. with the wrench. Jack. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. Hey, it's me, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, you guys were fixing the guy's toilet, and his you were like trying to spy, and you were like went into like busted his toilet <laughs> up with your wrench, and we're like, yeah, you got a real problem in there, man. <laughs> the wrench <laughs> told me to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you start bringing up that club, I'm like, this character sounds so familiar. What character has Justin played that is like this? I'm like, oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> the Call of Cthulhu man. I don't know. What have you done? He died, Nilio. What has Nilio done? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What have you done, Neil? Frank. I need to resize our faces. <laughs> <laughs> Things have happened. That cannot be undone. <laughs> Things have Things been set in motion. That cannot be undone. <laughs> the darkness has spread. Um, so Tom Bombadil will offer if there's anything else you would uh, possibly need that he could assist you with. Or you travel out to the Barrow Downs. I'm going. I'm going to stand up, take my last sip of water or last sip of tea, I should say, <laughs> and, and then I'm, die. <laughs> and I'm going to walk <laughs> over to the room that we awoke in, and just start grabbing my gear and putting it on. Okay. And just I'm going to say out loud as I walk from the table. Once I'm clothed, just lead me to my steed and... Oh god, he's nude! Going. <laughs> um, I would request of our patrons 
if they would um, possibly mail a letter for me. We probably for you. I will write mail a letter. I will write a letter to my cousin Dane and tell him that I have been tasked. I have I've found new information, and I am heading further north. Really messing. And I would like to write it in Kuzdul so that just us dwarves know what's up. Gotcha. Just dwarf things. Just us D bags know what's up. <laughs> just dwarf things. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Ugh. Tell me. And then I, I will are. offer coin to them to mail it. No, 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 there's no need of a coin. Just snaps his fingers. You would, you would <laughs> notice that Volg's uh, coin pouch is quite full. He would not notice. No, I'm saying the party. <laughs> he doesn't the party would notice. <laughs> All right. I guess he's flaunt. Weird I'm flex. Gonna... Weird flex, but okay. Hey, man. I, I'm just going to be like. Us dwarves are prosperous oh. now. <laughs> yeah, you I'm got very already. frugal. Save your money. <laughs> Save your money. What was it again that you said in the letter? Uh, just that I had found new information and that I was going to be heading north uh, towards the Etten Moors and the Barrow Downs. You know, Paps Blue Ribbon made a hard coffee beer. I did yeah. know that, and I've never tried it. I had friends who it's tried it. It's actually not bad at all. I mean, I'm a fan of PBR anyway. Everyone's a snowflake. Dude, Pibber never let me down. Never. They all have their own taste. Um, Does anybody else in the party need anything? A whole thing of chainmail armor. Like, give me some. <laughs> can, can somebody hold my character up while he puts on his? <laughs> I'm joking. Where's the wheelbarrow? We need a wheelbarrow. I has the horse. I need. Trust me. Does... <laughs> to answer me this riddle. <laughs> what belongs to you, but other people use it more than you? Your name. Good. This guy. I need to up the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start pulling out the shitty ones that I found that are very confusing. <laughs> oh, you're trying to find riddles. Oh boy, I'm scrying. Riddles.com. <laughs> riddles. <laughs> oh boy, are we? <laughs> are we? Are we? Are we the... that deep? <laughs> yes. He's in the deep lore now. <laughs> he dug too greedily. He dug too deep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know what you awoke in the, in the depths? The bell rock of riddles uh, appears. <laughs> you know what they awoke in the darkness, Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> right, man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk I, out fully clothed. That took too long. <laughs> I love I love that Christopher Lee wanted to be Gandalf like so bad because like, Gandalf's like his favorite character, but he was a fucking perfect Sauron. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He like just the way he's like everything, the way he says everything, like it, it's just so good. Yeah, both of the old with perfectly casted. Oh yeah, without a doubt. So I was watching Blade Blade Runner twenty forty nine the other Excellent night. Excellent movie. And Great movie. If you guys have you guys have seen it, right? Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite scenes is the one where like Ryan Reynolds' character like uh, goes to see the girl who makes the memories, and when he like thinks the memories are his, he like freaks out and kicks the chair. And when we watched that scene again, I turned to Liz. And I go, you know, he broke his toe when he did that scene. <laughs> <laughs> she like immediately yell at you, and she, I mean, she yeah, she knew ex immediately. <laughs> She's like, shut, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right um you're way off your baseline <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> way off 
So, was there anything else anybody needed? Any letters? Any anything? Can we gear up along with uh, Saul? Nice, healthy dwarven BM. Uh, there is a there is a start, very nice bathroom. Here. Start start the day right before I get adventuring. There's um, an actual toilet in this place. There's many so mountains to water. climb. <laughs> so as you guys switch out of the uh, the Tom Bombadil dressings, and uh, you're right. <laughs> There's many mountains to climb, so I best leave a few hills behind. <laughs> No, there's a riddle for you. <laughs> when you go to climb the mountains, yeah. how, how what kind of hills do you leave behind? <laughs> That's a terrible riddle, he says as he writes it down in his notepad. <laughs> I am taking note of this one. Dwarf poop riddle. <laughs> I'm here to record them all, good and bad. All right, so. All right. You guys, you know, get all your equipment together. Um, Frank, you are, you notice your horse outside, just chilling. Eating Where's the grass, horse and riding? Relaxing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, you know, uh, brushing it, and, you know, just checking in on it, making sure it's all good and ready. Did fit. anybody? What's the quality of this horse? This would be since I'm prosperous. It would be. Oh, What's your horse's that? name, oh. too? Oh, I never. What's your uh, horse's name? Toshi. I can't name it actually. Uh, gonna Toshi. Over, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> That's Cody's horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to Toshi to show his quality. <laughs> Does your dwarf, oh, does your dwarf so worship your horse too? Is it an ancient horse? Uh-huh. Is it? Uh-huh. I don't have a horse. <laughs> I have. An, Neither do I. I have I an a... old horse. <laughs> Damn. On his last legs. Well, it's almost, uh, it's almost like you, old man. <laughs> Barding, I'd say your horse is of superior quality to the Hobbit's nag. Oh, you knew her name. <laughs> I named her that because she reminds me of my ex-wife. <laughs> it appears that that horse is almost half in the smoker. Uh, she'll make it. <laughs> Maybe. Um, does anybody else have a, uh, a mount? Do we have a, do we have a build the pony? Also, this old horse, yeah, is like pretty short, actually, because it's a moonfire. I like that. (laughs) Moonfire. I think Frank and, uh, the Hobbit are the only ones that actually have horses, so. Alrighty. Um. It's just a big dog. It's not dwarves are natural. <laughs> dwarves are natural born sprinters. Natural born sprinters. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you listen to Gimli too, he also says he's a rider. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, Get me up on that saddle. I'm a rider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So you guys gather your equipment. You get your horses, and out comes Tom Bombadil and uh, Lady Goldberry before you. Hey, yeah. There you go. And they uh, hand you each 10 days worth of rations that will not spoil. And the boots were all yellow. Lambus bread! Exactly. <laughs> Lambus bread. This bread will even fill the hobbit's stomach. Just a wee... And just take like a big bite out of one of the pieces of bread. Oh, oh God! <laughs> oh no! They always <laughs> and Tom Bombadil's gonna say they always do that, even if you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta make some hills. <laughs> Wait up! <laughs> Let's make tracks <laughs> in our shorts. <laughs> 
Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So. Okay. You will begin to leave. Uh, this area. And this head... road's gonna be brown. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you start following a stream that was next to because Tom Bob Middle informs you follow the stream till the twisted to find the twisted oak. Proceed right, and you will make it into the area of the Barrow Down. He will also inform you that. <clears throat> The Barrow Downs can be a dangerous area. Indeed. With the... Barrow Rites that live inside of it. But... They also... Can be... Areas of great knowledge... To where you are headed. Question for the lore master. Yes. Since I have a, I would say, a, a higher than average steed, would I be able to mount more than one person with me? Yeah, you could probably have another person on there. With you. Okay. Um, Just go on. How heavy are you, Cody? How heavy is the dwarf? Um, I mean, I mean, I have a full, I have a full chain mail. Okay. So uh, oh, and I have a great axe and a sword. So, so I'm pretty he, yeah, heavy. Cody would be hard to be able to mount on the horse with you. Um, the elf would be relatively easy. And, uh, you just have leathers, Steve. I well, there's a spear and a bow. You could probably, Steve could probably also be able. Would I be able to ask Tom for like an extra steed? Because then we could fit everybody on a horse. Justin's horse can't carry another. No. no. I, I found a good picture of what my horse should look like. But if we could get one or two more, that would cover everybody. There we go. It's a little guy. Um, <laughs> little Sebastian, <laughs> little <laughs> Sebastian. Um, Tom Bombadil will offer three horses. Um, but he states they will not go through the Barrow Downs. No, I don't think we should take any of them. Honestly, yeah. I think at some point we're going to want to leave the roads and stick to the forest. Stick to the wilds. This land is treacherous. It's not made for ponies. He will also state if you decide to leave your mounts here, they will glad they will be kept well and ready for when you return. Besides, if we unearth some sort of crypt full of treasure horse is not going to be able to follow us down in there. Me and we're going to have to either leave it alone or leave someone with it. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll leave you here, Nag. <laughs> I will slowly dismount. Those are just my thoughts. I'm not telling you what to do. I will slowly dismount. Thomas. Take care of my steed, would you? Thomas oh. Bombus do. <laughs> Please, Thomas was my father. <laughs> you have a father? <laughs> that is, That's just that, is the person, that is the person who is of lonely dis Um Okay. So you're gonna go by foot. Rhombus, son of Rhombus. Take care of my steed, will you? 
very important to me. It's all Won't I have do. left. It will be here on your return. Just gonna pet it one more time. Pat it. Walk pat, away. pat! Um... So you guys proceed to go arrow down. Well, I'm sorry, the old. You're heading through the old wood. Start to walk down for a good amount of time, for a few hours. As you're walking through, it still has the feeling of safety that you felt. Like no concern. It doesn't really feel like as much as you're trying to like focus, and you know that there could be aspects that are dangerous here, it, that worry is not even there. Like, it'll come to mind occasionally, because you're like, ah, this, you know, we're traveling through the wild, anything could happen, and then you're like, ah, nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you get close to down the river, notice this tangled, twisted at the end of this river. Kind of river goes underneath. Um, being the signal that you slightly turn, turn to southeast on your trip. And as you get further and further away from this twisted, um, your senses coming back. start to become more grace of Tom Bombadil Lady of Mary kind of kind of feel that starting to when As... I feel it wane enough can I pull out my bow just to be ready yeah okay. if you wish um but yeah and you continue to travel through the wood. At this point, is there anything special that as we are traveling, people wish to do? Um, if we want to just do a quick, uh, I know like initiative, I don't think is a thing in this. I want to say it's done a similar way. When it was Simbarum, was it like age or something like that? Uh speed. I it was uh, I was off of an speed. Right. So what would you even do in this one? I mean, it, I don't know. There I'm is no initiative, but we could all just we could all still just roll if I we was, wanted to put everybody. That's what I was gonna points. do, but I wanted to see how uh, they at least do combat and refresh myself on that. Actually, combat is a vastly different. Yeah, combat's way, way different. But, I mean, it's still turn by turn. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's turn by turn. How they manage that. This is nowhere where I've been before, so I would like to use my explore skill to try to find the best path forward for the company. The company of Rhombus Bombus. Yeah, I just needed to double check combat really quick um, okay. to figure out a good breakdown. I understand. While we're waiting, Extra Life people, Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, we're raising money all weekend, Tabletop Appreciation Weekend. Absolutely. If you guys. Uh, any of our viewers are watching. We could uh, we could certainly use some donations, help some uh, help some kids that need it. And um, I myself benefited from Extra Life, or not from Extra Life, but from the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, uh, in particular the Bernard and Millie Duker Hospital of Albany Med. Um, I was a very sick kid there once. I had a ruptured appendix. Um, now not such a big deal, but 
back way back when when i was a little guy it ruptured it was pretty bad and uh i almost died a few times in the hospital and that hospital was fantastic and they made sure that we had video games and uh like build a bear workshop all sorts of stuff came through um just to try to make sure that you as a kid could still be a kid um as you're dealing with some really rough situations so i uh definitely definitely think it's a great cause and i benefited from it so um yeah any support you could give us would be great build your character by donating to extra life there you go Interesting. I don't know if they break down. Also, Steven's OnlyFans is now half off. Mm, it doesn't. Only he's got to he's he's... get in there before the ban happens. Exactly. You know? exactly. This is the time. <laughs> it's his last ditch cash grab. Yeah. <laughs> hey, moving to, from Denver, it wasn't cheap, you know. Yeah, it wasn't. You gotta gotta pay the bills somehow, man. Mm-hmm. Bye, Frank. Be right back. Okay. Frank's going to go get his wallet to donate. It's yeah. great. Thank you, Frank. Frank's Frank's setting up his OnlyFans. We just reminded him that he's gotta <laughs> he's gotta take some pictures. He's like, oh crap. <laughs> That's right. We've only got until October. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So pretty much it goes into there's two different scenes. If you would, opening volleys and course quarter rounds. We'll go into that more. Yeah, there's no like. It's right. I think that's much, up to you. Yeah, it's pretty much because like if you guys get ambushed, then it would the first round would start for the enemy, and then so on and so forth. So whoever engages is is usually gonna be, um, whoever starts the combat is the group that goes first so just so so you guys know determine turn order for not no not really because pretty much i ask everybody what they're going to do we we do those the we move everybody at the same time those actions happen in the same time and then it's the other people they do gotcha gotcha so it's it's side versus side not so much individual i see yeah, just so I like know. that. Okay. Um, but if you guys could just roll me a d12. Um, this way I have a order to go off of you guys when you're in here. Velg got a flat one. Two. Twelve. I got a four. Two is not bad for a pointy-eared princeling. I myself am sitting on <laughs> one. <laughs> Number one is the best. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the best at being the worst. <laughs> What'd you get, Justin? A four. Um, well, Steve. What is it that your character is gonna be doing? Do um you probably just do either awareness or hunting, whichever one you would think would be like more like to keep an eye on his uh surroundings to like sort of see if there's any sort of dangers around because he would be aware of this area. Okay. So we officially passed the halfway point on our goal. Nice. Yep. All right. So that is an E fifty. So we're a little over halfway there, folks. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so that is an 18 out of 14, so I succeed. Uh, do I detect any sort of dangers around or anything that we should be aware of as we travel? If you do, I'll let you know. Okay. The old man's starting to smell. <laughs> yeah, he's rotting. Why am I smelling? <laughs> I thought it was the <laughs> nag, but it's not. You're, you're dying. <laughs> Why am I dying? 
Because you're old. Because <laughs> you're 16 oh. years. <laughs> it just comes back. Why am I dying? Oh, I got okay. the mud bug. Got you down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you roll a d12, Frank? No additions to it. Just a straight roll, wow. baby. Just wow. I come back. I'm dead already. <laughs> Six. A mutual friend, acquaintance of ours, did that once. We were playing Resident Evil as children. And oh, God. <laughs> I, I stepped away from the controller to go take a leak. And this person maneuvered my character into a room full of zombies and then hit pause again. <laughs> so when I came back, I thought I was like totally in the safe area. So I hit start on the controller and, yeah, got torn apart by zombies. That's pretty good. Which they thought was so funny. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. I do say so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks for you, but it's still. Funny. Oh yeah, it's funny. <laughs> um. Okay, so Steve's character is watching. Uh, Frank, what is your character doing as you're traveling? So you, you oh. said you kind of had pulled out that bow because the kind of like the the feel of the blessing of yeah. uh, Tom Bombadil is kind of left. So I guess what I'll probably be doing is just obviously looking around. Obviously, you know, continuously scanning, but not so, you know I'm not gonna like do anything crazy with that. But more or less, um, if I see any small game, medium or large probably do some hunting on the top of that but you know i, I know i'm probably not going to get anything so overall i would say scanning slash hunting hmm which one are you doing <laughs> <laughs> well if i go with the you do have plenty action. of food and you guys i do you're kind of moving through you do want to save those rations. That's the yeah. Would be his his thought process is if it's a long journey, who knows? You know, best to save rations when you need them. So, I guess I'll I'll do the scanning more than the hunting. I'll just be ready in case if anything runs out, I can plug it. But so I'll do scanning. Just so you know. Hmm. Like scanning will be uh Yeah, you More guess like you can short you could, range, isn't it? Yeah, so you're just keeping so like where Steve is keeping view of uh far away. Like the hmm. general awareness that he can see. If you if you're scanning, you're kind of keeping close close sets. Like yeah, you could notice tracks coming through things like that. So if, yeah. if that's what you want to do, just give me a roll for that. It'll be one feet and however many success dice that uh, that you yeah, have so trained. I, since he's going to be doing long range, I'll be doing short range. And if I see anything, then I'll I'll yep. move on to hunting and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, so I got. Uh, according to this dice roll, a direct extraordinary success. So I got the the thing that... We got the 12, the Gandalf room. 12 and two sixes. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a picture because it's uh, I like that. That's pretty dope. Oh, it's too fuzzy. Fuzzy fuzzy was a bear. Oh, now it's too fuzzy all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> I um, swear, guys, I swear. <laughs> Justin, I what would be what would be what you're doing? So right now, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna get what everybody's doing, and then I will address as things. We're just traveling along the road, right? So yeah, you could be doing nothing. You could just be I'm writing just... riddles. Yeah, I'm just looking through my notes and just. Uh... Following behind a little bit, probably near the end of the group. Okay. Just my small little legs trying to keep up. Okay. Uh, Robert, what is your character doing? Um, I am just going to be uh, 
Just keeping my awareness up. Oh. Inspiring awe as I go. <laughs> Do you want to give an awareness? Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, it didn't succeed. Okay. And then last but not least, Oda. Um, I would like to use my explorer skill. Okay. Because I have not been here before. So I'm trying to find the best way forward for the company. Huh? Yeah. So I have Explorer is favored and I have two points in it. So I take two 12 sided die and then two D6s. Yep. Then you'll take the okay. best out of the 12 sided. Okay. And my target number is a 16. Um, so I got, yeah, I got a success. I got a nine on the 12 and a six and a five on the D sixes. Perfect. And that allows you to do what again? That the, uh, so according to the book, um, basically it allows you to, um, Find out where the company's heading, get back on track after detour, cope with adverse weather conditions, natural hazards, to create paths through the wilderness suitable for others to follow. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, yeah, so you're just keeping yourself on track. Yeah. Making sure that oh. nobody else loses. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to make sure that the party can follow where, where yep. I'm headed. But that, I, we have a clear path forward. Yep. Okay. Um, for the most part, oh, she. you all like for Steve and um, Frank, you don't really notice anything. Um, Frank, this woods is the most different woods you've been in. It's almost similar to like lore you've heard about Fang uh Fangon Forest to that it's kinda like impossible to track stuff in there. And it's very easy to get turned around because it feels as if the earth itself moves. Um But it is not hindering you in any way. Um Steve, you you're very aware. You would hear birds coming through. Um, so the forest is very like nothing. It doesn't seem like anything evil is happening. Just and uh, you are all able to easily follow Cody's path going through the woods. And as the wood starts to sparsen out, sounds get a little bit more of a killed nature. You notice the darkness that seeps from this land as you start to, what you would believe, come into the land of the uh, Barrow Downs. Um, is there anything anybody wants to do as we're in? In that sense, I will also draw my bow and just have it ready. Okay. All righty. Ready or um? Are we are we the forest actually? Or are we still in the forest? Nope, you're out of the forest at this point. Okay, you're right on I the do... border. You're right on like the border going out of the forest into the Okay, before I um before I leave the forest and before I draw my bow, I want to take out my spyglass 
and uh, look around uh, the area where we're heading to see if there's any potential dangers as we as we move further ahead. Okay. Uh, give me... I want to say that would also be... Alright. Um, what is the difference between scan and awareness? Scan is close quarters. Scan is, scan is also when you're looking for like hidden stuff. Books, if you're looking in a crowd it's of more people. Like, for it's like investigation. Face, yeah. Hidden hidden doorways in a room. Um, mm -hmm. sure. You're kind of just like scanning over that room. It's like the difference between investigate and perception in fifth. And what's travel in the heart one? Travel is um, travel would help you determine like we could talk to these people on the side of the road. They're OK. Travel is I, I know which way to go. The length um, of the journey, how to read a map, yeah. evaluate yeah. the groups right. on a road, if they're good or bad. All right. um, um, and then you also have. You have also still insight. Um, I rolled a an eighteen out of fourteen for awareness, and I rolled a twelve on the dice. So that's a critical success, or whatever the equivalent is called. Okay. Um. So you looking through this land, it is very much a. Um, it would remind you similar to, like, the bear, like the Hobbiton section of the Shire. Of okay. When you get to many of the hilled homes, it's just that mound. But there is ruined structures of stone that mm -hmm. surround these mounds. There's twisted trees. Um, the grass here is just darker and dense. It doesn't sit well with you. And occasionally when you're like viewing through your spyglass, you almost see as if a shadow move past at the distance into view and then blocked by something. You can't pick it up. But it's it's hard to be able to see what it is. Do I do I only see one of those shadows or do you I would see, them? see you would see it? Uh, you actually spot, you don't know if it's just one, but it would happen to you six times as you're... Okay. I would inform my compatriots that, uh, there, there appears to be, um, movement in the ruins. We should be, uh, should be cautious if we are to proceed. Question. Yes. To the lore master. So since I had rolled a, uh very good success here would that be able to carry into this so i could potentially see if anything had come through the area it um up until the border where where currently you're stopped nothing has came through once you get into the barrow downs you will have to roll another one because it's a different type of tree okay um but up until this point you haven't seen any tracks but your own Maybe occasionally the track of like a pins uh, or odds. Odds. So you would have seen old tracks of like rabbits, hmm. but nothing fresh. That would have triggered you to try and. You know what I picture every time I think of Frank's character. That one old guy on top of Elm's Deep wall lets the arrow fly. Yes. That's Frank's that character. Actually... That's what I picture. <laughs> it is about to, it's bound to happen. We're actually going to go from this point all the way. So Frank's. <laughs> he, he will be on the wall of Hell's Deep. Helm's Deep. <laughs> actually Frank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so 
Steve makes you all aware that he sees something move through the room. Burial. I will. Hmm. Can I use my travel skill to get a? Well, no, that wouldn't really work. I guess what I'll do is I'll try to use my awe, and I'll try to hearten my companions. Oh no, that's in hearten, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I think I will. Um, I'll use my awe and I'll just keep going forward towards the uh towards the barrow downs, like trying to show I'm not afraid. Okay. And it's a favored uh skill. Gotcha. And I have two points in it again, so that would be two D sixes and two D twelves, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, so on the twelves I got uh six is the higher one. And then I got two fives, so yeah, I succeeded. My target was a uh, fourteen. Gotcha. So yeah, you guys would notice uh, Velg, is it? Yeah. So you notice Velg? Just you would you would address the 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 party company, and Velg would just almost not almost become like more heroic in stance, and just proceed to continue to march in. Resolved with a new, uh, new strength. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, Frodo! Oh, Paulin, no! For Tom, Bumble! <laughs> <laughs> Um, is so everybody else, are we just gonna, everybody else is keeping in, right? Nobody else has anything to say, Steve? Statement? So it just seems darker? Pretty spooky. Yeah, just like, the overall, not so much the light coming down, it is still bright, it is still the day, but the grass here is of a darker shade. Um, Nothing more than a trick of the light, a wisp of cloud. <laughs> um, and things of that nature. I'll show you where this place is on the map, Ranger. <laughs> I know of where this place is, and I also know of the dangers that lurk here, so... I would be cautious if I were you. Hmm. Alright, if... I was going to go and continue in. Continue on. Um, Taking out my bow now. Now I will my, my My great axe is never far from me. I use it like a fucking walking stick. Well, that is what... That is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all in all. I'll continue forth following Cody. Okay. His awe is inspiring. <laughs> awe inspiring. All right. So if people are being aware and stuff like that, or you're going to keep uh, scanning, um... Okay. okay. I elevens, use... el elevens are bad, right? Yes. Elevens are critical. Okay, I, I critically failed. Oh wait, actually, if if I rolled a dip, oh, it doesn't matter. I failed either way. Um, if I rolled a different number on my other dice, is that technically better than an eleven? No. 
Okay, so I critically failed then. Oh my god, oh. Robert's dead! Oh my god. It has happened. I knew this day was to come. I will be using my awareness this time instead of scanning since we're out of the woods. Are we closer now to the actual Barrows lore master? Yeah. So, with that being said, I would like to switch to scan. Yeah. Scanning. Um, so I will... I have that as a favored skill. I have three in it. So this is three, three D6s and two D12s. Okay. Target number 16. All right, cool. Um, eight on the D12, uh, six, five, and three on the D6s, so that's a success. Okay. And I would be looking um, with, you know, treasure and burglary in mind. Yeah. Because I'm a burgle boy. What was everybody's colors? White, red, green, purple. I'm red. Black. Purple. I'm actually going to change one of my items to one of my useful items before we get going. I had a, a lantern, and I'm going to change that to um, picks because I'm supposed to have uh, the capability of burglarizing things. Gotcha. Wonder where Robert is. Want me to roll for my awareness? Yes. Your awareness. 17. So I beat my number. Okay. Did anybody message Robert just so I don't spam him? No, no I haven't yet. All right, I'll message him then. Sorry for the technical difficulty, folks. Indeed. But while this is happening, you know what you could do without What's using that, any information of our amazing adventure. Heading over to our Extra Life webpage and donating for the children. That's what you can Absolutely. As Robert has considerably lost power in his place of living, you could empower children. Yes. Well done, Neil. <laughs> Your donations may provide money to pay the electric bill for these hospitals that help the children. Exactly. Can't play games, like video games without electric. Exactly. We might be playing games, but there's one thing we're not playing around about, and that's raising money for kids. Oh no, he's back. <laughs> hey, you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, heals you. Yeah, sorry, I I lost power for a second, so. <laughs> Like, my internet's trying to reconnect and all that, so I just did it on my phone for now. Okay. Storms are coming. Storms, are coming. Storms coming? Hatchet coming. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. Now the only problem is, is it's like... <laughs> it is, it is a little rough. We're good. Uh, 
So I'll, I'll say that my critical failure is um, I'm so like amazed at how nonchalant this dwarf seems to be looking for treasure and, and digging around these ruins that I'm paying more attention to him than what's going on around me. Like I'm just like keeping an eye on him to make sure that like he doesn't get assaulted or whatever. So that's why I'm failing at keeping an eye out of elsewhere. So catch me up. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> okay. We we talked about we talked about raising money for the kids and donating to extra life. Something that's very important to do. And I'm caught up. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I went treasure hunting. So if you didn't know that. He's just gone. <laughs> I, I walked over to the barrows and I'm starting to look through them, yeah. I thought we all were walking over the barrows, though. We are. Okay. He's scanning. I'm doing overall periphery awareness. So Do we, like, Neil, you said we all kind of sense, like, some, like, darkness or whatever here? Yeah. Or is it just, like, the grass and stuff that's just, like, different? No, you would sense darkness. All right. I will make sure I have my sword at the ready, just in case. I have to change. You better not change my color. I wanted to be green. And Cody wanted to be a little lighter green, and Frank wanted to be a little darker green, and well, Steve wanted to be a green between Frank and I, so... <laughs> I was just gonna... said he wanted to do camouflage, right? Right. I, I was going to actually throw down the Simber Room for you three. Man, Iron Red is just out. It hasn't even come back yet. So, for the token process, it'll be a little bit confusing at home, but uh, yeah, using them for different people. So, we will use the Damocles. The Ak Ak and the Vim. Um and then at which point I love Damocles, I'm gonna play him again. Um we'll have still a purple for Justin. And uh Frank you will be a lighter grin. And anyway. Then, uh, Vim. You were white, not anymore. Yeah. Um. But. You. Start to. Uh, look around. Everybody's kind of looking. The only one who, uh, is distracted is Steve. Um. Kind of just. Seeing the awe. That, uh. Velg just uh, showed and um, just kind of like nonchalantly follows in <laughs> a little bit like not paying attention to um, your wearing your, your your awareness environment surroundings that that is another word you could use sure um, and as you start going through these hillscapes, keeping an eye a look about, you end up being the path you guys ended up taking kind of bottlenecks you up this one hill. Um, and as you get to the top of this hill, you would notice it's about to be. Is it caught up on the Twitch? Can you? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So keep in mind, Frank, you are the green without any design inside of it. That my room boys are as shown, and Justin. Wait. What bowl? So, 
would notice, I will do just is one normally the the Barrow Downs kind of has an aspect of crypt like building into hills, things of nature. Um, this one is just a complete building that has been destroyed. Plant growth is now on it. There is nothing truly standing tall here. There were statues out in front of it that have crumbled. And, uh... It's a little bit out of place. What is it? And for my people who passed there... Um... As you crested this, you would have noticed... Some shades at first and then they kind of like some shadowy something that has a end up hiding it that nature what is it that you wish We ha do you have the order, Neil? Should we just um, follow that? We could follow that. So, Steve. Uh, I failed my roll, so I am completely unaware of anything. Yeah, but you still at least see the this building, these structures. You're not aware that the the shadows really. Okay, uh, where did... Uh, actually, I wouldn't even know that. Um, would I know anything about this place? You could roll a lore to try and recount. Sure. Um, all right. No. That's a five total, so I do not know what this place is. And that makes me kind of uneasy. No yeah, I, this place. I, yeah, I, I have traveled these lands, and I, I've come through here many times. I have never, never found this place before. I've never laid eyes on this place. You wary, all of you. Are you going to continue to move forward? What do you What do you think? Um, I'm going to hang back a little bit because I'm I'm trying to figure out what this is. Yeah. All right, uh, Frank. I had succeeded my awareness check, and I'm going to inform the party of what I saw and point to the areas where I saw it. Yeah, so you ended up would have seeing kind of one over here. One over here, one over there, and one over here, but kind of went that way. Round. And same with that one gone out of sight. So that's what uh, Frank out. Uh Anything else yeah. you'd like to do? I'll probably just, you know, make sure my arrow's knocked and pull back my bow a little bit, but keep it pointed at the ground for the most part now, just in case something pops out, I can just whoop. Got you. And I'll Ready? Are you going to move forward any distance? You know, um, let's see. Could I use my, since I don't know necessarily what the deal is here. I'm just going to consider it a threat right off the bat. Okay. It uh, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go wholeheartedly into attack mode as soon as whatever it is pops out, but I'd mm -hmm. like to use my battle skill to kind of communicate with the group on what I think we should do to at least get the advantage in case of something threatening is here. Okay. So... 
Um, let's see, I have that as a favored. I have two points in it. And I have a, so it says 19 plus, and one of them is a six. One of my sixes is a six. Yeah. So I pass my uh, check. All right, and, and that and that allows you to just be able to uh, so it it shows the firm grass on the rules order. of combat, maneuver, etc. Okay. Each. Five. I just really quick. Seems like covers it. Not really. All right. So you pretty much state that kind of like at this point, nobody venture too far away from each other. Make sure we hold our our flanks. Until we find out what's going on. Yeah, and what I'll do is for my movement, I'll go over to the right statue on the right, so I have an eye on the two. Yeah. Or I can, yeah. Uh, yeah. Approximately here, so I'll be able to peek around and see, you know, in the direction where those two went, and I'll communicate to somebody else with a ranged weapon to take the other flank, okay. while the other two. Um, people get themselves sorted and ready for possible hostiles. Gotcha. So, yeah. Um, I think I'm the only one with a ranged weapon. I have a bow. Right? Oh, you do? Okay. But I'm not, just because like, just cause you're a this. ranger doesn't mean you're only ranged. Yeah, man. You don't have a monopoly. No, This, I isn't, thought... this isn't monopoly. This is Lord of the Rings, man. <laughs> And it's not to be confused with Lord of the Rings Monopoly. <laughs> um, okay, so that's for Frank. Then we go to... Actually, real quick. Yeah. So this is the only time where he doesn't seem like an old man. Where he just immediately... Boom, 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 boom. And then he immediately is like running. <laughs> where the rest of the time you know, like, eh. <laughs> right now he's just straight up like adrenaline starting to pump fire in his eyes ready gotcha the eye of the tiger the eye of the ring wraith <laughs> ah, the the rain wraith is a pound you. <laughs> <laughs> when you're gonna do he's gonna see <laughs> When the eye of Sauron is upon you, because that's when that's where, where the, the ring race is gonna be. Gonna be. <laughs> oh boy, 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 boy. I'm trying to figure out. We're either gonna kill you guys quickly, or we're gonna figure out how things work. Light it up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so the Frank Justin, uh, all right, well, it looks like everybody's getting ready, so it's time for clubbing. I pull out my fell club, just a big old stick, actually, um, because he's a <laughs> he's a proud supporter, Hobbiton, <laughs> yeah, and I use it for everything, the Shire Country Club, yeah. <laughs> Justin's character is um, actually all dressed in like elf attire. Right. <laughs> a little hat. Yeah. So I'm the gay. My like plaid <laughs> pants. It's actually um, perfect for like a like 1920s mobster too. Yeah. <laughs> He's descended from um, Bullroar Took, who knocked off the goblin's head, Gulfimble. Uh -huh. And drove it down a rabbit hole, and that's how the game of golf was invented. Hit it a hundred yards. Yep. So right now we don't actually see anything, right? It's just 
the sense of darkness. Um, Frank told you that he... There were shadows moving, but... He saw shades or shadows or something of that level. We don't um, have a clear picture, though, right? Nope. Can I do a riddle roll? <laughs> it, uh, riddle represents the ability to draw conclusions from seemingly unconnected scraps of information by deduction, reasoning, and intuition. Yes. Just want to get an idea of what would be here. Yeah, you do. What everybody's roll. been talking about. You do a riddle roll. It's my big roll. <laughs> riddle, you have a three on. in that, right? All right. Let me do I got two of these. I'll pick six was the higher one, and then I have four in riddle. You have four? Yep. Did you put all your points in that? No. But a what lot are you talking about putting your points and stuff? At the beginning, when you make a character, you have ten skill points that you can allocate. To... I thought you just had to do whatever it was in the, in the. Well, you have grid. your starting one, and then you also get some points you can buy and stuff. Yeah, but there's like a little. You got to pay attention. There's a little conversion chart. So like, it oh, yeah. costs like no, it costs like one to go from zero to one, but it costs two to go from one to two. I spent five to go from three to four. Oh. On... So I didn't have to use the the ones that were like pre done for my. You, you do, do, but you then do, you can you add more. additional yes. dice to each so, one by spending points. But I I read that you started with no points. Maybe I missed that. Okay. No, you start with ten. Um. Yeah, it's it's <gasps> the way that even once you roll. So I got. You uh, can uh you can still 25. change. Your breakdown. Cool. Yeah. So where's the where's the page in that? So that way I'll I can... find you the page, Robert. Just give me oh, a sec. Thanks. Yep. Did you I don't uh, know succeed? What makes something a crit? I succeeded, but I don't know what. Twelve what on the D twelve is a well, an automatic automatic success. Okay. I got a six. On if D12. you got a six, you just perform it better. Okay. So like if you get any sixes, it increases Robert. the level of success. If you see Robert, I got 25 yeah, total and I got a six on the D12. 26? 46. 46. Gotcha. All right, so you succeeded and got one six? Yeah. All right. Um, you, like, you think about it for like a second and you instantly get an idea that these could be <laughs> big brain activate power rights. Um, yep. sense of where we are. There could be forms of wraiths. If he's saying that there's some form of shade that's moving and like tricking the eyes, that's what you would believe. All right, boys. Pretty sure it's spooky ghosts. Some bear wraiths. I don't know if any of you fought them before. I myself have not. But anything could use a good clubbing. All right, I stand ready for battle. I don't know if anybody has fought any of this stuff before. Maybe, maybe Steve's character, but what's Probably what's everybody's character. endurance? Twenty-seven. Uh, 27. All right, uh, twenty-five. Little guy. Just ready for battle here. Are you moving anywhere? Mm, probably behind somebody bigger than me. Because, <laughs> so, like, pretty much Frank's character's on the right flank. He's saying to put somebody else on the left flank um, who's ranged. And then you have, like, the whole middle area. So the only person who's like kind of in front of you, because I started you guys in the line, would be Frank's character all the way to the right. Yeah, I'm just standing behind him then. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. How about you? <laughs> Let him come around that corner. I'll crack its legs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then, uh, Robert. Yeah. It's your turn. Okay, so Frank pointed them out. People made moves. Can I just go straight? Yeah. 
Want to like go up towards that like center of the the thing? Right there. Sure. So as you get also just so everybody knows, as you get to the center of where these runes are, like that's going uphill. So if I drew um, the lines, it would be ascending. The closer you get to the center. So the building is built at the top of a hill, or it's Correct. on an in, or it's Correct. It's built okay. on the top, but you're still climbing up. Gotcha. Like the middle of the building is the technical middle. It's only about like even like some of these stuff is built, like all of these things here is all built um technically on the end. And are those are those full walls or are they like uh it's like half base? walls, some walls, base of walls. It's a mixture. Okay. It's an amalgamation. Alright. Alright, Robert. So you're up there. You succeeded your awareness pre previously, correct? Right. Um, so I'll even say like as you get up here, you still don't notice anything right. You just kind of see more okay. of this destruction of rubble and things of the Okay. Is that it for you? Um. Yeah, can I? I don't have like proficiency or any skills in scan, but I could just roll a d12 for it, right? You can if you can end up succeed if you could still get it. Like, well, if I roll a 12, or yeah. a, what is it, a 10? Because a 10 is also like a... Wait, is a 10? No, no, that's... No. Never mind. Nope. So I have Don't to get a 12. 12. You would have to get a 12. I'm thinking about combat, so that's why I said 10. Yep. Uh, I got a 7, so no. Okay. Yeah, you don't... You're scanning, and like nothing at all is jumping out to you. Yeah, that's fine. Um, all right. Velg. Oh. I succeeded my scan check. <laughs> could could I take something back? I would really like to do a stealth skill instead. I'll allow it. Sorry. This is your one time. Lost the monitor. <laughs> Please hold. Well, I'm still figuring out, like, what... No, I know. I what can do. do. Yep. Uh, okay. So, I rolled a 3 on the d12, and then I rolled... Six, three, one, so thirteen, which is my target number. Does that is that a success, a success then? Yeah. Okay. And I got one six. Okay. So like you start walking up and like at first you're naturally just light on your feet as it is. Um but like occasionally you'll still like crunch a leaf or something like that. You you start to go up and like instantly your like demeanor doesn't change, but just how your feet step changes. Okay. Um, so like everybody else doesn't really hear you continue up. And you're able to kind of like stay low on this hill, so you're just peering above the incline. Okay. But you're closer to the Cool. Sorry, thank you. Alright. Now. So you asked for my endurance before, it's a 28. Huh. And then I did pass my scan before, and I did get a 6 on one of the dies. Okay. Um, I said um, I was scanning the barrow. I'm gonna say... You would notice I think strange ring on the ground at your feet. <laughs> you would notice that and it, it kind of strikes odd to you. Um, and makes it seem more reasonable what uh, 
Uh, what is what is your name, Justin? Mungo. 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 Mungo Rumble. Yeah, so you would see what Mungo was uh was saying because you're not seeing any tracks. Only your own footprints of your party members moving in. You don't see any other tracks around here. And that's kind of like weird if Frank's character spotted the Okay. And these guys have been making it known that they think that they're Mongo getting ready for combat. Yeah, well yeah. So mm -hmm. um Sal make Sal said, you know, get somebody of range on the other other uh statue looking around and then prepare to defend against any area. I'm going to use my... Can I use a skill then? Yeah, what do you want to use? Because that, that one was from my well, previous previously. Turn. Yep. Yeah. I want to use um, battle. Okay. It's favored, and I have three in it. Okay, just so you know, that is exactly what Frank did. Just for you as a player? Yeah. So that's what Frank did. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah, well, it would make sense. It would make sense that now my guy's suddenly being like, oh, I need to pay attention. We're in combat. Or yeah. we're about to be in combat. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just letting you yeah. know. Okay. Okay. Uh, I got two 12s on the 12s. And right. then I got one 6 and a 1 and a 2. Okay, so you would automatically succeed and uh, pretty much like taking that information in from Frank, from what you believe this battlefield is looking like. Um, you come to, to a quick conclusion that it may be, it could be also beneficial to take the hill if nothing's there, because then you'll see anything trying to climb the hill. They'll have to go through terrain. Um, okay. and things of um, that nature is some of the tactics that you just as a dwarf would uh would end up feeling this way because right. you're funneling them up to you, not them coming down on you. It has so then I would, like I would proclaim to my party that to my companions that I shall mind the hill. Give us a better vantage point. And then I would try to make my way towards the hill. Making my way towards the hill, walking fast. So I'm going to say you get to about, right about there. Um, Slippery just, grass. Just past, uh, uh. Durandir. Durandir, yeah. Okay. Um, as you start to get a little bit more of a scene, you're next to a pretty large ru uh, rubble pile. That's kind of protecting you. Okay. And... Steve, back to you. Um, am I aware Actually, of... Give me one second. Write that page number down before I lose it. <sighs> and it's gone. Okay. Gone forever! Who do? Hear me. Sorry, man. Hmm. Hold on, I have to look up this attribute really quick. Uh. 
What a do, what a do. Well, while Neil's looking up that attribute, uh, you can, uh, you out there watching can look up our uh, donation page uh, for Extra Life and donate today to help some kids who are going through some uh, very serious health issues uh, learn to uh, get to be kids and play games and, and do things that kids are supposed to be doing. Uh, you can donate as little as a dollar, and you can, uh, and that would be like a prime time to donate. But you can donate all year long. Uh, that donation page is always open, but uh, we are just bringing attention to it today while we play this game. So if you want to support uh, a good cause, then go on over to Extra Life and check it out. Noise, 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 noise. I like when that Steve guy talks. He should talk more. I'm, I'm trying, man. See, the battle is not always what's happening in the campaign. Sometimes it's in real life. Help kids. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay. All right. So that's how I hate my hate's never resolved. <laughs> uh, Or how we kill these things. Uh, we just keep hitting them until they don't get up. But if they're ghosts, how do you. you, you well, you gotta hit oh, them. Man. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a fool that could withstand an axe. Or okay. two. <laughs> All right. Um, at which point. Uh. There's gonna be um so at which point Cody This is what. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out a good way to start this. Um, er at which point? Steve, you... hey Wraith. Oh, well, Steve's gonna get ring wraithed. We've been waiting for this moment. They just appear, or they're they've been there. They they are moving forward from direction. So the one up top is moving south across the hill. The one to the east is moving west, and the one to the west is moving. In their okay. hands, ah, uh, but. Weapons of mass destruction. They have swords. Nuclear bombs. Yeah. <laughs> they they seem to have swords of ancient craft. Okay. But their oh my God, it's swords. figure um to the whole group starts to bring um just like coldness settling in that is coming at which point all get it volley round 
We are currently now into combat. Uh, this is going to be a learning experience for us, as this is the first time we've done combat. Hence why I had to look at some good shit. Uh, but there is pretty much um, three phases to... Sorry, two sequences to combat. Opening volleys, which is now. Um, so if anybody has ranged weapons out or things of that nature, you can proceed to shoot such a thing. Do want everybody to roll like new initiatives for combat? No, so there is no such thing so much as combat initiative. So right. the way that that works is it does a uh, side order. Um, so nobody is really ambushing anybody, anybody. They would have ambushed you if they could have gotten closer without you notice, noticing, but you all had pretty good battle rolls. Um... So your formation, in a way, has allowed you to notice them um, before they would have gotten close. So it is now your turn, your side's turn, at this point, point. Um, and you are relatively in opening volleys. So you're still at a range of that close quarter. Isn't so much there. Um, but at this, at this point, I will allow anybody who has a ranged weapon out to fire their weapon. So I'll shoot at the one to my left. Okay. Do you know how combat works? I do not, but I'm just rolling. So don't fucking just roll! <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm assuming it's. Well, I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's. Neil, you, you told us to go, man. You yeah, told no. us if you wanted to take a shot, take a shot. <laughs> yes, so it, you can do that, but, you know, we're going to look at that. Okay, so I have two for my bow. So I'm assuming that I roll 2d6s plus the d12 and add it together. And then I'm assuming that it's the injury is what I'm trying to beat, correct? The injury score of the no. bow. No. No. Okay. You're trying to beat their parry. No. Their parry. Oh. No? Your own strength? Yes. The difficulty of all attacks rolls is based on the player hero's strength. Uh, modified okay. by the parry rating on the targeted enemy. Like Simbaru. Got right. it. Um, the difficulty of, of all attack rolls made by adversary players is the players are equal to the target hero's parry score instead. That's why you guys have a full score. Got you know it. what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Okay, so my strength is a 14, and so I roll... It is going... How is it modified? Like, I'm you assuming said... that... Yeah, I'm assuming that they have like a, a plus one or a plus two or whatever yeah, same, to their same as their aspect of of uh And so that gets added to your strength and that's the number you have to overcome. It gets added to the TN. Yeah. Yes. So you would get a plus one. Okay, so I rolled uh seventeen. And what do you have to beat? Uh si uh fifteen. So I succeed. Fourteen plus one, right? Yes, correct. But say it, I think it's easier at this point if we say it all out step by step so we get in the habit of it. Yes. Okay. Because it's new. Show so your work. Yeah. So, <laughs> so strength, so I, had to, so I had to beat a strength of a 14 plus the enemy's parry of a plus one. So mm -hmm. the total number I had to beat was a 15. So I rolled a nine, a five, and a six. Or a nine, a five, and a three, which is 17. So I beat right. the 15 by two. Okay. So that is a success. Yes. All right. And it, I think damage is just a number now, right? You don't actually roll damage? Yeah, it's not a roll. It's, um... It's, it's whatever your weapon had. 
Yeah. So my weapon is a, my weapon has a damage of three. So it takes three damage. So did you have any um on your rolls, did you have any quality of successes? Uh no, I had a nine, a five, and a and a three. So yeah. say six. So yeah. So nothing. it's normal. Yeah. Yep. So it's and then normal. uh so what does the injury number mean? So that's if you like cause like a serious blow like they have something called a piercing blow it's which like is a like final blow well it's not a final blow so if you roll like a 10 or a 12 then you would consider like mortally potentially mortally wounding your enemy okay and that would kill him almost automatically so if you do that then the injury become comes into play because then you would have to roll to see if you beat the injury and if they beat the injury, then you wound the enemy, and that would kill them. Because they become mortally wounded. But you can okay. only do that if you roll the highest number on your attacks. Got it. Okay. And it's only on the d12, I think, Neil? Is that right? Um, there's different styles of, uh, of things, because like, even like the success dice have... Um... Uh, success icon, you can trigger one or more special results, so like a heavy blow, uh, like the pierce technically is part of that. It It is off of the, uh, it is off the well, I was like thinking a, a piercing blow is kind of similar to a critical, and that like, that's, I mean, if you roll a 10 or a 12, technically you rolled a critical. Okay. When it seemed to me that's how they resolved criticals was like a critical is essentially a piercing blow is what they okay. call it. Okay, so there is a pierce. So there's a heavy blow, a fend off, and a pierce. All right. Um, that can be triggered by special damage, which is if you get a six on your, um, success attack, right? So your success die. Okay. Each of those can do different things. A pierce can then cause, um... Because you can suspend the one success icon to modify the feat die numerical result of your attack by a plus two. Thus, you can actually trigger a pierce blow. Okay. Okay. Um, if you had, if you rolled a an 11 or a 12 on your feet die, the pierce does not change it. Because it is a critical success or a critical failure, there's no way to change those. Um, because you can't trigger a pierce. A pierce blow is getting a on a ten or a twelve. So think uh, three point five, where the crit range is nineteen to. 20. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the the special 11, damage. If I'm reading this right, special damage only happens when you get a success roll on a d6. A piercing blow only happens when you get a critical on the d12. That is that is exactly what I said. Yeah. But you okay. can your special damage so like pierce is a special damage factor that can happen that can actually impact a piercing blow. So if you roll both, that's what I was roll. trying to say. That there's there is still a special damage called pierce that can try and compound into a piercing blow. Okay. So bows, spears, and swords can all do pierce. Uh, heavy blow can be any weapon. And so that fend- makes it could make it easier to get a piercing blow. So if you were like at a nine. And you were using a sword or a bow or a spear. You could decide to you use would get a, a bonus, and it would instead end up being of like a heavy blow or a fend off. Okay, Correct. but that's if you get the six. Okay, exactly. Yep. 
so there's there's three different types of special damage but piercing blows yeah they are the critical but there is a way to get to a critical even off of special day um okay. just so you know um, All right. um so, so after- at this point a real place blow always has unpleasant consequences for its target whether or not the the hit is successful in producing long-term damage. A, com- a combatant can be disorder, uh, disoriented by the sudden pain, bewildered, uh, bewinded, or be sent reeling by the powerful impact. So when a melee or range attack roll succeeds, the target suffers an immediate loss of endurance equal to the damage rating of the weapon used. Um, adversaries do not normally become wary, which is going down to zero. So the, just... there is a, there is kind of an order though. So it says, I'm looking on page 95, I guess, or is it 96? Close backwards. quarter round sequence. And in the close quarter round sequence, we'll actually have more of like an operation because you have to pick your stances. So is it just because that we're in a volley we're all going? Yes. Okay. Alright, so after I fire my arrow, I also want to move up uh, 10 feet, I guess, so two spaces so that I'm between this wraith and the hobbit. Um, I'm just saying, that's what I want to do. Yeah, I'm trying to do it a step at a time. So what is your um damage? Three. Okay. So your arrow flies and hits and it barely sinks into this. We're doing this now. Great. I'm I'm slowly remembering how Simber Room works. <laughs> Started pouring out stuff. So. All right, and then you wish to move where? Uh, ten feet. So I want to be between uh, myself and, or I want to be between the wraith and the hobbit. So up to, yeah, right there. While keeping an eye on the wraith that I shot. And that's Um, all I want to do. Unless I I can do anything else. Which I don't think I can. I'll see. Nothing. Shoot, Shoot as many arrows as possible. That would be it. Um, so after that, was there anybody else who had a bow? I have a bow. I think Justin does too. I have one if I can take it out. No, it would be whatever it was currently. You don't out. have a bow. So Frank and <laughs> Frank and Robert, are you guys also loosing arrows? Yep. All right. You gonna attack the right one, Frank? Yes, the one I'm pointing at. Okay. Yeah. So that will be if you want to roll for that. Yep. Holla. So it get a plus one, right? Yep. So your TN gets a plus one. All right, so I hit the TN. Does that hit? Or... Yep. Okay. So I peg him. And what happens exactly? Um. So what is the damage? Uh, damage would be a four. Okay. So yeah, there's no roll for damage. It's just whatever the weapon deals. Um, 
see what it died no because okay. like the, the creatures the creatures will have a uh... So they have the damage, but then in parentheses, like this one, it has, which isn't the one you're fighting, but it's combat proficiencies, bite, three, parentheses, three, slash, nine, slash, twelve. Hmm. What does that mean? Those in combat with us now. You did four. So your arrow that you let loose, you notice it deals a little bit less damage as though they have like some form of armor on it, but it hits it. It does damage. It's like oh. it's in there, but it's not it's not really like, like something stopping it, it from being able to penetrate fully. Right. Which you would know that they have some form of all. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming I'm aware of what these things are. I'm assuming I've fought them before. Okay. Find out. Well, as I'm knocking my next arrow, I'm going to be calling to my good friend Mongo. And I'm going to say, Hold back with the rest of the group, Master Hobbit. Okay. They've got very thick armor. I got a big club, though, but uh, if you say so. The three of us will alternate as we climb. Stay with the dwarf and elf. Here I go. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what this... Aspect of damaging. Oh, I know what that is, Neil. Because I'm looking at a wild wolf right now. Uh huh. That's the, uh, that would be the injury rating. So you have the first one, which is the damage. Right? And then the second one would be injury. So maybe it's actually pluses or minuses to attack. Second would be damage. Third would be injury, maybe? Well, because it says, like, here it says fangs, too. And then it's got, in the parentheses, 3 slash 14 pierce. Right, so 3 would be damage, 14 would be injury, maybe. Yeah. And two would be the attack. Well, yeah, that would be. I think two would be the number of attacks, right? So, so there's, there's, or maybe two is. So three would be the uh, three is the damage, hmm. but then there is still three slash nine slash twelve. Oh, yeah. For the one creature I'm looking at, you were looking at the the wolves. Yeah, wild wolf. Yeah, so, like, the two is the damage. But then there's a three slash 14. Pierce. I don't know what that is. Please bear with us here. We're just uh, trying to figure out this aspect. Part Part of the process is learning how these games work sometimes. It should also be said that we're playing the alpha version of a game that's not released yet. Either. Yeah. So we're playing a game that's currently being developed. Which yeah. is cool. Mm-hmm. It just causes confusion sometimes.
Pull out the <laughs> You'd be think you would think that there is some aspects. What page are are you on about this one? What do you mean? Like, are you in the one of the books for the Wraith? I mean, I'm in the in the Alpha rule book. Like, so even if you look at, so yeah, if you go to the Wraith, it, it really doesn't matter much. But even if you go to the the Wolves of the Wild, and you look at their their breakdown, their endurance is a twelve, might's a one, hates a three, parries a plus two, and armors a one. But their combat proficiency, fangs are a two, which is three out of so fourteen. That's, so if the fangs combat proficiency is two, right, then you roll twelve and two d six. No, and then three would be the damage. I do, I do not do any rolling. That's why you have a parry. So then, do we roll against it? Yes. So. You roll to get your parry, TM. Right, but we have to roll with their modifier. So if it's a 2, then we roll a d12 and 2d6 against our own parry, right? Yeah. And then damage would be 3, and then injury would be that Four. last number. 14? Right. Yeah, I have an injury of my axe is an 18 for injury. Okay. Right, because what it's saying is that, like, it's easy. Like, remember the 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 but lower the number, the mean? easier the what easier it is to pass. So if a fourteen means that, like, if you roll less than a fourteen, you get injured, right? If it's a piercing blow against you, yeah, yeah, so no. like, if you have a higher number, like, my long sword has a sixteen slash eighteen because I can use it either one handed or two handed. So if I use it two handed, the chance of being injured is like higher because it's an eighteen. It's harder to beat, right? Uh, weird. because then if you go up into the Marsh Dwellers, which is below the Wraith, their bite is a three, then the first one is three, this, the middle one is nine, and then the last one is twelve. I see For Marsh you... Dwellers, their bite? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Or their claws. Mm -hmm. Either one. There's three options. So it's three nine twelve or three ten sixteen. Well, I guess we need to see a creature because I, I don't see what you're looking at, right? On page one five five. You, yeah, one five six or one five five. It's all in the same book. So, like, even if you look at 156, the Wolves of the Wild, their claws are a 2, then it goes 3, I, 14. I think the 2 is how many they have, though, isn't it? No. So, like, in Simbaroo, no. that is the, the, the closed system sister system the way that they write things very in threes uh three ten sixteen um let's see Gonna go to the beginning of the creatures and maybe we can like maybe there's something at the beginning. Okay, 
Each adversary features a each, primary each and list... secondary combat proficiency resigning yeah, main. Yeah. Each listed attack form is followed by damage, followed first injury, by and finally by the special damage opportunities, if any, that are available to the adversary. Yep. But it still doesn't make any sense. That doesn't Until make any sense. By an adversary produces one or more success icon, but one master can spend them to trigger special results. Are you sure you don't roll? I didn't think so. When the lore master is making a die roll to resolve an action attempted by a servant of the shadow, it can be considered more appropriate. Yeah, you roll. You make rolls for these enemies. Yeah, I was gonna say this isn't the same as Simbarum all the time in that regard. The lore master is actually much no, more involved I've, in this. I've read it and I didn't think So for example, most adversaries score a piercing blow on a roll of ten or whatever results on their fierce die. So you are rolling for the adversaries against our parry. Okay. It's, it's talking about its rating. And then the stats is damage less injury. I just, it doesn't make sense when there's a third slash. Yeah. Like a bite can't have a one handed and two handed aspect. Because otherwise, the way you, the what you said about the swords makes sense. Maybe it's it's if you roll those, if you roll those specific numbers. No, I don't know. Okay, so here's what it's definitely not. At first, I thought it corresponded with the number in front, like just a second ago, where it was like I saw fangs, and then there was the two. There was the two. The two is the just the specialty and, die. Yeah, and then you had the the bite, which has the three slashes, right? And then I went down to yeah. wolf chieftain, and that has a three, but it only has two numbers in there. So that's what it's just... not. Like on the claws of the of the wild wolf, it has a two, which means two specially die. Its damage is a three. Its injury is an eleven or a fourteen. Maybe it causes a greater injury if you roll higher. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I'm know trying to find something else that has. Most of them only have two, like even orcs only have two. Uh, yeah. So, like, maybe it's something specific to the creature type. Because, like, even some of them have a dash, which I don't know if that's referring to damage, because most of them will have, like, the dash, Six. the dash is if it's no. The dash is if it got like has an ability. So like some weapons like ours have like keen or something like that. And so I think the dash, oh, okay, like I what see I've it. seen, is some of them say like piercing or keen or something like that. So I think that's what the dash is. Is like if there's a dash, they don't have a special like ability with those I weapons. See. Okay. No, it, like they have... it allows something else because like the stone troll right. can see somebody. And yeah, right. Undead has like a chilling touch that has like break shield. 
So what what I was thinking is like maybe it has like the three is kind of similar to like like my weapon has like two different injury ratings for the weapon type, but like the difference with like the long sword is like whether you're using it one handed or two handed. So like I don't understand. Like so, the marsh like... dwellers are the ones that are like the claws. Right. I get it, but the bite has a nine and a twelve. Right, right. So that's what I don't understand. Like, are they biting with their left jaw or their right jaw? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, uh, I, what, what, um, for, for creature, the creature class? For the creature, are they in? I don't have to worry about it. We're fine. I, the the, the way of figuring that out, it's whatever. But. A successful bite attack roll. The creature holds onto the target. The victim can only fight in the forward stance, making falling attacks on a successful attack roll. All right, we're fine. Bash is if there's another option um, for the special damage. So I, I guess it's got to be some aspect of... of being able to deal different levels of injury. Or if it deals special damage, and that's the injury level? But well, we should be fine for now. Is it something to do with grappling? Because they, like, they have this ability called like, Seize Victim. It's not on the claw, but it says on a successful bite attack, roll the creature... Holds onto the target. The victim can only fight in a forward stance, making brawling attacks. On a successful attack roll, the target may spend a success icon to break free. No, because that's what the dash is there for. So when it goes 3 9 12 dash, the dash is stating that there's a special ability, and that special ability is Seize Victim. So, like, if they, if they get a 6 on their bite. Then they go. To... No, I think it's just if the bite succeeds. It doesn't say that it's like a s special one. You know that is exactly what that says. Yeah, the dash, the dash trigger. Break dash shield. Like break shield is it is the trigger if I roll a six on my success die. It'll. That's that's what the success that'll happen. Because I have to follow distinct rules for what successes a creature will take, where you guys can choose what you wish. If there's a dash there, that means they have a special ability that's shown lower. Because that, that's something that's, that's talked about in the format okay. of presentation. I, I just don't know, I guess, te you know, you have two sets of teeth. You have your... Your have your you know light duty teeth and then your like head. alien. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
I'm just, I'm a little confused. I'll see if I, but for right now, it doesn't matter. So, back in to the aspect of the game. Um, we are, uh, Frank, you just shot your arrow. Goes into that. Are you moving up the hill, Frank? Are you staying where you are? Um, I'm only going to move when the Hobbit and Steve are lined up with me, so we can kind of back in with the other two. Because yeah. I don't necessarily know what's going on above me. All I know what's going on is what's over to my one side, and I'm sure I can hear some commotion on the other side from Steve. So yeah, you would. Have... Yeah, you from my perspective, it's it would be safer if we start moving back. Yep. Trying to get with the other two. All right, but you're not going to move now. Um, only once. Yeah, once they. Justin. Yeah, yeah, but they're as they're moving, I'll be moving in conjunction. Um. Neil, I'm watching something right now. I don't know if it if it gels, but they're saying that the um the players always go first, like in the combat, and to determine the order of combat, because we were talking about initiative before, it goes off of your stance by what stance that's, the player picks. That's yeah, once you get into close quarters. Okay. Right now, we're in the volleys. Uh, okay. So the one side does their volleys, the other side does their volleys, and then yeah. we're going into stances yeah. once it's in close court. Okay. So, like, the way I, I said it is the wraiths come in, you then notice them, because that was, like, their surprise attack, because they have no form of range. You guys get your volleys out, and then it's going into close quarters at that point. Okay. So now we're going into close quarters and the stances. So pretty much at this point, all players select a combat stance for their heroes at the start of each round. Choosing one of the four available options um, for players, which should be the forward stance, open stance, defensive stance, and rearward stance, which is combat. Um, first three stances are mainly for... Close combat, just forward, open, and defensive, which allows combatants to exchange blows in the thick of fighting using close combat weapon. The rearward stance is the only stance that allows you to range attacks after the opening volleys. You can assume any close combat stance at the start of the round, while the range combat stance can be selected only if a number of requirements are met. See the description below. Certain circumstances may result in the lore master allowing more player heroes to assume a rearward stance that would normally be possible. For example, if the company is fighting on a narrow ledge, mountain pass, and or similar features, which makes ranged attacks easy. Same reasoning applies to situations where the company outnumbers the opposition by at least three adventurers to one human-sized enemy fighter, or five adventurers to one great sized opponent. So right now, you guys don't technically outnumber.
So nobody is going to be able to really successfully take a rage stand during close quarters. Okay, makes sense. Because the way that this predicts is everything's moving too quick. Right. Um. So at this point, everybody will determine their stances. Forward stance, you seek to exploit an, an, any opportunity to attack to the point of exposing yourself to the retaliation of your enemies. Your attack rolls gain one die. All adversaries engaged with you gain one die. Combat task, intimidate foe. Um, open stance, you fight without sparing yourself, but giving proper attention to your enemy's actions. No advantage or disadvantage. Rally comrades is task. Defense stance, you fight closely, uh, conservatively trying to protect yourself or others and holding your ground. All adversaries engaged with you lose one die. Your attack rolls lose one die. For example, um, each opponent engaging you. So, like, if you had multiple around you and they were all attacking you, they would all lose one die. Okay, um, I'm going to take a defensive stance. Okay. I'm going to take a forward stance. Forward stance as well. Open stance. I will also go forward. Okay. Once all players have returned their stances, all combat it's fighting in close combat must engage one or more opponent. What are the combat tasks? Is it necessary or no? I don't. Honestly, not. There we go. Combat task. Uh, what are the number of tasks commonly employed by adventurers involved in combat? In general, these tasks require here to fight in a specific stance. So, you can do certain things. So, like, intimidate foe. Brave warriors fighting in a forward stance can attempt to intimidate their foes to make them waver, break, or even fight. Do so, the attacking player must make an all roll um, as the main action for the round. The roll is modified by the might rating of the adversary with the highest score. The player here loses one die for each point of might. So that's how you can make them, because there's a... There's a factor of hate or resolve, which is how much almost the morale of that unit and certain things will drop hate or drop resolve or increase hate and increase resolve. And if they have a high, if they don't have a zero in hate or resolve, they'll stay to fight. If that starts lowering, it's almost like, oh, things don't look good. I don't like this. I'm going to. Um, then you have the rally command, which, um, you make an enhardening roll as the main action on a successful roll. All members of the company fighting in a forward stance gain one die on their next attack rolls. If the roll produces a single success, then also all those fighting in open stance gain the same bonus. If the roll produces two successes, or more, all player heroes fighting in a close combat stance um, gain one die on their next attack roll. And then the defensive stance to do so the the protective to protect companion to do so the attacking 
or the action the acting player makes a battle roll as the main action for their round on a successful roll the protected player here's parry rating is raised to by one against the next attack plus another one for each success rolled and okay. We don't, we don't need to worry about prepared shot. Okay, so for me, because I'm the only one doing a defensive stance, so I would roll battle, and that would be against my heart. Yeah, but you don't go first. So um, right. you have to go in stance order. So right. anybody okay. who's in forward goes first. Yeah. So that would be me, Cody, and Frank. And we get the option... So we have to be assigned to a foe first, and then we can roll our awe for the intimidate foe. Okay. So I guess between the three of us, Frank, do you want to... Hold on, hold on. Okay, engage combatants remain as such until all officers are defeated or until they leave combat. More enemies than player heroes, more player heroes than enemies or sides equally matched. When a round sees the company outnumbering his foes or marching back in the number, he may be just chosen by the players as follow. Player heroes in a close combat stance choosing an unengaged adversary to face from among those introduced by the Lord Master as eligible targets. If there are not enough free enemies to engage, player heroes left without an ad adversary must engage an enemy already engaged by another player hero. If one or more of the com company is fighting in... Rearward, it is possible that there will be enemies left when everyone fighting in close combat has engaged an adversary. If this happens, the Lord Master chooses whether the spare enemies engage a player hero who is already fighting in combat stand in a close combat stance or stand back to attack with a ranged weapon. Alright, so I'm gonna say because everybody is in a close combat aspect. Nobody can go into rearward, but like say the guy, there was no wraith on the top of the hill. I would almost say like Cody's character um, and Robert's character could go into a rearward stance mm -hmm. because they're not in a relative move area. But if somebody could get to you, you cannot go into a rearward stance. So they're too far away? What? No, you're fine. If the guy uh, on if the guy on the hill was not there, you and Robert would not be in a con you, like you could go into a rearward stand. Okay. All right. You could still even even if um the guy was but not does there. Does that mean you that's could, you could still go into a close combat stand? I'm planning on marching my ass right up the hill. <laughs> what was your question, Robert? So, I like, are they all eligible targets in close quarters or close combat? Yeah. I mean, they're all, like, okay. equal. Okay. So, like, I'm taking that to mean that I will, like... If Cody engages the one on the top of the hill, then I will engage the one down in the left corner. Yeah. Okay. But so there, the, there's three of us who are all in the forward stance, right? So how, how do you resolve that order? Do we... So, so even 
So I would say, I would almost argue that there is a possibility, like, that that one to the bottom left is not in your range. So then it's not an eligible target. And neither is the one to the right. Which would then mean that both you and Cody are attacking the same wraith. Because pretty much you try and select a free eligible target until there is no more free eligible targets, and then you can select any to any eligible target. Get what I'm right. saying? Right. So what you're saying is those two are not eligible targets in close combat. Yes. So then, essentially, this one guy is so close to, let's say, Cody and I, that we have to engage him. Correct. So then we only have one eligible target. Yes. Because because of that guy being so close, you also can't go into um, a rearward stance. You see what I'm saying? think that like part of this is that we're getting bogged down and this is just my like take based on how like some of these like symbarum works and everything there's not really this idea of distance so to speak of like 30 feet or 40 feet or anything no, like that it's, it's just not, like and i'm not saying right that. i am i am saying that just overarching that there's no 30 feet or anything like that there is close and far and i am going to say in like a normal aspect of, of movement you would not be able to reach the one that is no, I to get the bottom that. I get that. To, the, to the right, so thus the one but above so, you is... But so the, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that yeah. in a sequence, which is supposed to be about 30 seconds, right, which is the same thing in like D&D, all of this is supposed to be happening at the same time, right? Yeah. So while we are engaging, they are also engaging. Right. So like, if you were to even think of 30 and 30, their 30 and our 30, we would end up engaging at around the same time. Well, so when you think yeah, of, like, that's close everybody quarters... Thinks that, everybody just thinks that shit is static. Just that right. only one person's moving at a time, and it's not true. It's Everything's moving all at once. Right. So, like, I guess what I'm saying is, like, are we overly complicating this by saying, oh, this group of people are, are in close combat, but this group of people are, everybody, even though we're all in a relatively... In close combat. Right, but what I, but what you've just said is that everybody's in close combat, but we all have different eligible targets. Correct. Right, which is going to complicate it. It is right? not. And I'm wondering... It, well, that, it does. That, no, no, it doesn't. Because, because the reason why people are going to be not eligible, it's the same concept that if okay, that, if okay. that raised I mean, to I the... Dude, I, I don't give a shit. I was just trying no, to I'm, make a point of how I was... And I didn't get to finish. So, like, what I'm saying is that overcomplicating it is essentially saying that you have to track me and Cody with this one wraith versus Frank, Steve, and Justin with the other wraiths, right? Because then we are only have one eligible target in close combat, while they may have two in close combat. So their close combat is different than our close combat, rather than everybody being in close combat and all targets within the close combat are eligible because they're all within close range, right? So I see what are you're we saying. And I so don't... all, okay. So then you don't think that that's an issue, okay? The reason why I don't believe it's an issue is because there's. I don't so need these... a reason. Okay. Sounds good. So, so for the children, we're raising money. So this is this is what's going on. Your eligible targets, Cody, and so then we go into the order of stances. And it just goes from forward stance going first and progressing through where rearward stance is the last. Okay. So we will go off of the same rules as previously, um, just to at least have some level of order. Uh, Frank, you're in a forward stance. You have one eligible target. He's the one right in front of you. So that is who you would end up going after. Yeah. 
Um, then it goes to Robert. You are in a forward stance. You only have one eligible target. Cody, you're in a forward stance. You only have one eligible. Now it goes to the next stance, which is open stance, which is Justin. Mm-hmm. Justin, I will argue that you have two um, in your range. One is free, unless you wanted to do your action of rally uh, comrades. No, nah, I'll go for the one. Uh, Wait, so oh, can Wait, he? Can't, yeah. Because, like, read this can't way. our combat tasks go first? Yeah, probably go, like, one at a time, and then, like, movement with the attack, so... I mean, if like they if, all go, like... Who yeah, has... Because I mean, if one of them dies... I need to you three to roll... So, Frank, um, Robert, and Cody, I need you to roll a, uh... A battle. Who has the highest battle score? I think Cody does. I have a two. Yeah, I don't have a battle score, so. I have a battle score of three. Sorry. Okay, so there's two actions. You have your main action and then your secondary action. Main actions are your your main things like recovering your position after being knocked back, recovering your weapon, helm shield, whatever, um, carrying a fallen comrade, moving across the battlefield, and so on. Um, that are other than attacking or performing a combat task. So your main action could be com- doing your combat task. Secondary actions, advancing or retreating while fighting, trying to locate someone on the battlefield, so on and so forth. Um, so at this point, a secondary action would be advanced. Because um, it's not so much, you're not moving all the way across the battle. So if that's how this is explaining it, then technically everything could be in close combat. Because it's not that you have to attack them. It's just if you can reach them in a full action. Do you see what I'm saying? So I thought they were depicting close combat as something that you are like almost within easy melee range. So, in the aspects of comparing it to Dungeons and Dragons, if you're within an easy amount of movement, which they consider 30 feet, right? But you can still be in close combat with somebody up to 60 feet regularly, because in that action, they can get upon you, right? So, that's why you couldn't use a range attack, because they end up getting into your melee space so they can move across the battlefield within reason. And that's why it would take your main action. Does everybody get that? My only counter to that would be that it could only traverse 60 if you move to... Hmm? They would only be able to traverse 60 if you move to... So, like... Um, if they no, were 60... It's the I equivalent of dashing and, oh, okay, okay, and regular okay. movement. So you're using That's your main cool. action to be able to sprint instead of using your secondary action to advance. I see. So I'm, I'm just looking at the close quarter round sequence. It says each round fought at close quarters follows the sequence set out. Stance, engagement, action, resolution. So stance would be... We've already done that right engagement all combatants in close 
combat are paired with one or more opponents. So why don't we pair and then do action resolution? The actions of all combatants are resolved in stance order from forward to rearward. And then under engagement, I guess we could see so once all is... players have been determined their stance, all combatants fighting in close combat must engage one or more opponents. Right, we've got that. Using miniature cardboard cutouts, as shown in the following paragraph, plays out the number of So this is how I'm going to play company. it. Right here, I'm just going to make a ruling so we did stop getting bogged down. So everybody right here is in close combat. You can pair off... Everybody is within a capable amount of movement to reach with them, but not to be able to attack them. Okay, so you can pair off with how you how you see fit with who's going to go after who. Um, pairing off is going to so everything is an, is eligible for targeting. See, I, I just feel like that's still weird because then it brings up action resolution. Uh, so it does say hero, hero with the highest battle score goes first in each stance, right? So, like, Cody would go first, then Frank, then me, right? At least in this first stance, right? And then main action is a task that requires a hero's full attention, is often used to make an attack roll or to complete a combat task like those described on page 102. So what I'm hearing is that you can either attack or do a combat task. Not and then secondary actions. But if you're, says if you're saying that we cannot, if you're saying that I could not. So just for an example, if I wanted to, I'm going to pair off with the Wraith up on the hill, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So I can move towards him, but I can't attack him. No, right? you could. Oh, okay. All because right. that, thought... is, that is the equivalent of an advance or a retreat. But if you are yeah, running I, across... So my, my, my question really was going to come down to, I thought maybe if I was out of range that I could move as a secondary and try to complete a task as the primary it's... if I was out of range of combat. But if I'm in range of combat, then I would move for combat. So Well, you don't have to move for combat. No, I'm just saying I would choose to. Well, so to Neil's point, it says secondary actions are faster, simpler undertakings. And then they give examples, which is advancing or retreating while fighting. If we're all in close combat, technically, I would think that we're fighting, right? Um, and so, like, advancing or retreating, I would think of that as movement. Would it's, be secondary. It is the difference yeah. of how much you are trying to move. If you're moving across the battlefield, you are sprinting, i.e. sprinting, that is going that to would take, take your that full would take action. your full action. Okay, I got you. But would, would you, like, I guess my thought is that um, you can't, at least from what I'm reading, would you think that you can't actually do that if there's an eligible enemy to be engaged? So, like... So that's why I believe the breakdown of doing the pairing off is not how it should be. It should be, it goes to the stance, that stance, that battle master then decides who to pair off with, whoever is in the top of it, because that's the, uh, the level of initiative. Unless you are right, calling it, out, unless you were calling out, hey, I'm going after that one, you go after that one. So like, let me, let me put it this way. If they're all an eligible, right, and you're in a, in a melee, you can't just run away from somebody, right? Because then they'll technically attack you, Right. So the idea is if eligible, to my thought, is like you are engaged in some form of combat, whether it's just one or multiple, right? Um, like yeah, even Obi-Wan and like Qui-Gon were engaged in combat with Darth Maul, right? To run leaves them open to an attack. I mean... So eligible targets is different than an engaged target. Eligible target is a target that you could get to to engage with them. They are eligible for combat. Right, but you have to engage with an eligible target. You don't That's have no, you don't have to engage with an eligible target. Your first your first target if every it's, target is free. Hold on, stop, let me finish. If every target yeah. is free, then you get to choose an eligible target. But say no eligible target is free, then you would 
choose just an eligible target. You see what I'm saying? But you yeah, can still, you can still, flee. you don't have to. No, if you were fleeing, you could flee. It's, if you're interacting, I mean, so if you're interacting in, in the, with an eligible target, you are trying to do something of damage or I'm get close to it. I'm looking at the thing here, and it says players in a close combat stance choosing an unengaged adversary to face. If there are not enough free enemies to engage, player heroes with left without an adversary must engage an right. enemy already engaged by another player here. So you have that's, to engage in combat if you're right. In a combat that's situation. how I'm reading it. Like it doesn't give us the option to like not be engaged. Yeah, I think that if you're if you take a stance, you have that means that you have to be engaged with an enemy. That's how I'm reading it. In I, I'm a, I'm assuming that fleeing is an option if you do not take a stance. No, you because you stance, have to take a stance to be in the order. That's why a secondary movement is retreating. Hmm. They're just saying you have to participate in combat. Participate in combat could be attacking, running away, moving, anything like that. That is participating in combat. Okay. It's just the way that this is written is weird. It's because also it says, a, second, it's a second language. Yeah, that's what it, it, that's how a lot of this is always written is. Yeah. Um, is an aspect of. You have to go to more of the overviewing term of it. Well, we're still very early in this, obviously, this is very it's alpha because I've just been I was just scouring Reddit to try to find out if anybody had yeah, combat broken down and <laughs> nobody's got anything really talking about it. Yeah. But that's that's why it's like. I'm trying to say that I am going to take this into my own understanding. Yeah, that's fine. And my, my rulings on that is going to be, there is going to be the level of stances. So you take whatever stance it is, which is allowing for different actions. Okay. There is an aspect of all of these people are eligible targets. The pairing because the, the, the aspect of trying to pair off before doing stuff is, is more of you guys being able to prepare for battle. That's like shouting out, I'm going to take this one. Hey, you know, why don't we hold here? So then you could pair off that way. Um, but even... I hate how it, how it refers to that. Well, it's something we could bring up to to free league. You know, the game's in alpha. We're supposed to be like playtester people and review stuff. Odie's looking for that silver lining. I mean, yeah, that's fair. That's true. <laughs> like, if nothing else, this is just like here's here's a a way that. You could make your rules a little bit more clear and, and some ideas for how that could be done. You just say, hey, the, the alpha rules are kind of unclear on combat. Yeah. They could use a, a clarification. You, know, even, really, it, you got them on speed dial. How do you, how do you flee like it's, if you wanted to run? Because that might help us. I, that's what I said. Like, it's no difference than... It's your. It's whatever you're doing in combat. Yeah. Combat is just the. We're in a situation where you can be targeted and harmed, or you can interact with whatever is going on. You can. Run so away, I'm thinking, like, if you're hide. trying to run away, they're going to pursue you, right? Correct. So how do you like? How do you break? Like, how do you get away? <laughs> like, if they're just like, couldn't they just be chasing me across the plains? into perpetuity because technically I'm just running and they're just following. So yeah, I never actually get away. Eventually something, somebody would get tired. That's where environmental hazards come in. Like I would get, I'm going to have you do a skill check to do this. Oh, you now slow down. They sped up. It's no different than doing a, uh, a flea in Dungeons and Dragons. Technically they could chase you forever. If you just look at, yeah, they well, get a movement. You get a movement. You, that's you know the ring mean. race coming after Frodo and Aragorn. Like after they stabbed Frodo. Yeah. 
you know, it's like basically they were like they're friggin' hot on our tails the whole time. They're still coming after us. Yeah, and you need to. Well, would that still be considered close quarter then? Because like close quarter, my thought is like in close quarter, like you're reachable, like and you will be engaged for fighting. Like so, can you break out of close quarters? You know, if I was gonna, if I was gonna like put my two cents on it, like right now, as we are arrayed out on the map, I'd say pretty much everybody's close quarters. That's that's what I if, said. If, like, if you were in... gonna, if you're beyond the map right now, if your character ran off the map right now, I'd say you're out of combat. You're out of close quarters. And to answer, and to answer the specific question about fleeing. Um, it says, um, so, so basically, um, yeah, like everyone's saying, um, like initiative order is basically based on the battle and, or the battle score and the stances that you take. Um, so there are, uh, main actions and secondary actions. Steve, um, and one of them, Steve, I need to stop you. We've gone over that. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, you. Just let, him, just let him finish. Well, I'm just saying one of the main actions that's listed is moving across the battlefield. Yeah. And then the secondary action is a- advancing or retreating. So retreating would be what? the secondary well, fighting, action though. for... Well, yeah, because you're, diff- fi- well, because you're fighting because you're in combat. Like, so right, but they're two different actions, right? So like what I'm pointing out for you is moving across a battlefield is considered a main action while advancing or retreating while fighting is a secondary action. Right, and I think that what they mean with by fighting is because you are in combat with, a, like, so you are retreating while in a fight with something. So something is trying to attack you and you are retreating from it. That's what it means what, by while fighting. Yeah, so and you, that's also preventing you from running across the whole map. Isn't that what close combat game. is, though? Yeah. So, like, those are at odds, then, if you're in close combat, right? What? Yes and no, because I think that what it means... So, so right now, where you're at, you could just bolt to the, like, directly to the west and just... Or directly to the, to the east or the west or wherever and just try to run away. Um, but then that would mean that the, that because you are still, because we are technically in combat, you are still fighting because those other enemies could then come after you. So technically you are fighting, like, so you are retreating while fighting because you might have to ward off the enemies that are coming after you as they give chase. But you can still technically retreat from combat, you're just still going to have, you might have to fight things while you are retreating. Is what I think that that is supposed to mean. Can I, I, I agree. Uh, Can okay, I, give you... I would have looked at it differently. I would have looked at advancing or retreating while fighting would be like you're still taking an attack action while you're falling back. You can't, right? Like, well, you can't. Right? But if you're moving across the battlefield, you're not taking an attack action, so you're Correct. just running. So they would yeah. be. I would think of them as separate. Yeah, moving well, moving across the battlefield, it it lists that as an example of main action other than attacking or performing a combat action. So that is a thing that you can do is moving. So can and I then can I can I give a breakdown of like a battlefield? Sure. sure. So you have two lines. They are far away, right? They at so, at a certain point advance close enough that they can volley at each other. Hence the opening volley for the first action. Right. Usually at that point, people are still moving or, or coming in or some as- aspect of that. Right. Your ranged people are still going to be running in um, where they could still stay out there and keep their opening volleys. But at, cer- at a certain point, the two forces are going to collide. OK, when those two forces collide, that's when you're in close quarters combat. OK, so that that could be there's still a, a huge battlefield. Right, that's going on. You, you could only be in actual combat with a a few people, but technically all around you is close quarters combat. Right, everybody kind of following me there. Yes, no, maybe. So. Need verbal. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, I was nodding. My bad. Yes, yeah, I was I was nodding as well. I had my mic muted. All right, so once you get into close combat, there is the the movement of maybe your group successfully took out this band, and now you are moving 
to go to another area. That would be marching across the battlefield. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But let's say you just slayed the foe right in front of you. You are going to advance to the next flow. That is the foe. That is the secondary action. You can still attack that foe because they are close enough in quarters. You're not going to a whole new band to try and fight them. You're fighting the current band you are in. I'm kind of thinking, I'm kind of been thinking like when Shalab attacks Sam, right? And she goes for the stinger and Sam stabs her with sting. And then she starts to retreat back into her tunnel, but it's done in such a way that she could still harm Sam. And he has to, he stays put and she retreats back into her tunnel like bit by bit. So it's like, it's a guarded kind of, it's like a tactical movement. It's not just running. It's, she didn't just turn around and run off, skitter down her tunnel. She backed into it so that she could defend herself. Yes, it would be like disengaging. Yeah. And you're running across the battlefield is dashing. Right, for all of us 5th edition noids. The part that I believe overcomplicates it is because you're trying to pair off on adversaries before initiatives. Yeah. I don't... And that's only because you guys have... Like, the only reason why that happens is because you guys right now currently equal or outnumber the enemy. Wouldn't that make sense in a real-world combat scenario, right? Like, it's not like you have time to say, oh, I'm going to go, like here or there everybody just kind of goes right when you get to close quarter you've lost that ability to make like strategic decisions because you're well, just in a fighting scenario and that's that's danger close and that's right. when you're that's where we are so you're like the idea engaging with whatever comes your way is what you're engaging right, right. so like you're, the you're... idea of pairing off would be that like Cody and I, for instance, are facing the same one, right? There's no clear identifier from either me or Cody that one of us is or is not going to engage. So we both engage because it's happening at the same time. Well, it's right? not. There's nobody else close enough for you to focus on. That that's the baseline of it. So that's why it's not. You it's not you're that's presented you... with. Uh, it's not you're presented with the whole 360 view of the whole map. Right. We we're approaching the hill. The wraith is in front of us up the hill. So for you and me, it's like that's who we have to deal with. That's right. why they focus on eligible targets. As well. That's why your two Cody and Robert, your two el- you don't you don't have the other two eligible targets because you have the one that is coming down the hill right at you. Right. So by that definition, though, they are not in close combat with us. Only the one is in close combat with us because that's what makes him eligible is because he's in close combat. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah, what, that, that's yeah. what my point is that yeah. earlier. Yep. I would be, I would say that is yes. Sure. So then once, so like Frank, you're in close combat with the one next to you. Um, it will put Justin into an in-between so he can actually pick if he is going to help Frank or help Steve. Because Steve, you are in close combat with the one approaching from the west. Yeah. So then is Justin in close combat with, with both either of them? of them, correct. Okay. Because they're both coming at him from different directions. Right. Yeah, so then Justin... In the mindset... Would ha- if they both, because if the one wraith comes in on Frank, it's the same, it's equidistant to the, I know it doesn't look that way, but in the, in the battle escape, it is equidistant for him to travel to the one that is at Frank or the one that goes to Steve. Right. No, that, that makes sense. So then... And there's nothing um, to really stop, like, because it takes... The reason why he couldn't go into a rearward stance is because it takes at least... You have to overpower the creature to be able to not get past it. So, like, if there was two people 
blocking the wraith that is on the eastern side. And it couldn't get through to Justin, so he could take a rear stance. You see what I'm saying? For that. Well, he, and isn't that the idea that he's not in close combat at that point because he's not really because threatened? Because it's because he's not threatened. Yeah, he's not in the threat range. But right, right. now, to- Frank can't hold the wraith by himself. Right. So it allows him to be in the threat range. Right. So technically, Justin is in close combat. He's in in threat range. Like uh, I guess we could assume close combat is threat range, right? Yes. Um. So like. In that case, Justin, what was your stance that you picked? Open. He, he's open, so he doesn't. And he doesn't Steve's matter. was defensive. Correct. Yep. Well, so so my thought that like, I don't know how I feel about, and I don't know about the rest of you guys, the whole idea of like assigning things, because then by that, Justin would, or not Justin, but Frank would be assigned to the first one, right? So Frank's gonna go, and that target is considered assigned, and so by their encounter assignment rules, Justin then wouldn't go after the one Frank's going after, he would go after the other one because Steve's in a defensive and that one's unassigned when Justin's going. No, because that's why they make the you kind of like make your game plan prior. You outweigh them so you can have a battle plan. Where if there was more enemies, the enemies assign themselves. You see what I'm saying? No. I, what does that mean? Oh, so the, yeah, there's the two forms. If there's you're two... outnumbered yeah. Then they assign to you. If you outnumber them, you or equal them, them, you assign to them. Yeah. It's not like right. Two, so if there like... are not enough free enemies to engage players, and that's after. But like, I'm. So are we thinking like the stance order doesn't affect assign? Like it doesn't necessarily affect assignments? Or no, I think I think uh, with that one, it actually came down to being. In uh, the specific stance, did it not? I'm not I, wrong. I just kind of see it playing out like linear, like it's pretty like it's linear for me because we right. like we did the battle. Frank's character and I did the the battle test so that we could figure out what we thought was the best strategy to do, and we decided right. that for my character it was ascend the hill. So then when there's an enemy at the top of the hill, it's no brainer. That's what I'm that's what my character is going towards. Right, right. So if there's gonna be an assignment, I'm basing it off of just what I was doing beforehand. Right. You well, know? I, this is what my point is. Maybe this is a little more clear. I'm wondering if like the idea of engagement is a little flawed and that we sh- we should kind of loosely interpret that part. Cause it's saying all comp combatants in close combat are paired with one or more opponents and i think like yeah, you guys you guys get to decide how you're pairing it that that is base minimum so it's right. not so much that it's it's not stating that you are forced to automatically like there's a chain of command this person gets to pick first this person gets to pick first this person no it's stating that however you guys split it up is fine as long as you're not doubling up on an opponent when there's somebody else you should have picked. So like, say there was another... I kind of disagree with that too, though, because like, that takes out like strategy to some point, right? Yeah, but can I finish my thought? So the, the reason why that's there is if there was a second wraith up on the hill, right? And it is in the same distance to you guys as the, as the current wraith is, there would be no way for you and Cody to be able to attack that other wraith without the one, the second wraith coming in to help defend its cohort. Do you see what I'm saying? So, like, you're both charging in at the same time. They're gonna, I'm sorry, Neil. They're going to fight you just as strategically as you're going to fight them. So they're not going to allow you to flank their their company men. I, I just think it's all. It's like a, it's. It's like your your natural self. It's your natural preservation. Yes. Yeah, because y- you wouldn't openly be like, "Oh, here comes this guy running at me with a spear, full bore th- at me with a spear," and I'm just gonna turn my back to him and attack um, this guy and, and attack this guy who over my here. Co- my cohort's fighting. Right. It's you're gonna pair up against each other, but if there's nobody else to pair up against, then you're gonna take the advantage of it. Right. So that's why you guys get to depict your battle plan. So 
currently though justin is the only one like he could work with steve and say steve is going to be like hey i'm going to defend this one work on killing the other one with frank and then come over and assist me because i can hold this one from coming forward like that that's the idea of it for this layout Yeah, so I mean, I guess it's this one's going to be interesting only because do you like guys, Frank. Do you well, guys, there's, there's well, I'm just trying to think of the other Lord of the Rings system. Do you guys remember uh, the D6 system of Lord of the Rings, where as a party you kind of decide, all right, I'm gonna like shoot a fireball over here. This person's gonna try and hit that guy, and then I'm gonna try and hit keep this shield here so nobody can move forward. That's what your overall message is. And then those actions go out. You see what I'm saying? Like you plan your attack and then that attack happens. Mm -hmm. But you have to do it with whoever's in your eligible sphere. Right. So maybe I should have like granted, maybe these should be a little bit closer in nature. Well, I just I just think No, that, no, no, it's fine. I think the system just needs a little bit of polishing. That's all. I it's we're yeah. we're trying to argue semantics on something that isn't in the semantic phase. Right. It's all good. Yeah. So this is so this like, is what it would be closer to kind of being. No, no, I I think I think you I think we got we're at a we were at a good point where we were. Um so then I was my thought is like, okay, the next thing is like, okay, how do we work out the assignments, right? Given the stances indicate order and and the battle scores then indicate order as well, right? So like the idea is that anybody who's in the front stance goes first, right? So with the engagements, stance is picked first. So my thought is like, does Justin really have a choice if... Frank's assigned to one and Steve's assigned to one, but Justin has a a stance that acts before assignment, Steve's stance. But assignment doesn't right. go with that because it's all happening at the same time. Well, so so he, what I'm saying is that if Justin's stance would is open and Steve's is defensive, right? Does that mean Justin should engage the the one in front of Steve before Steve engages it. Nope, because Steve is already. And then does Steve have a... it's, right, not, so it's, what... it's not that he's engaging it before me, it's that we're engaging it at the same time. So Everybody's basically moving the, the same time. Yeah, so basically the idea is we pick a target, we go and we all go at that target at the same time. So just so if No so no I, I got that. So what I'm saying though is that the, the rules say that if somebody's engaged then another character can then choose to do either engage the same one or, or engage somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So if it's all happening at the same time, does it matter that Steve's engaged with one and Frank's engaged with one and Justin just gets to choose? Or could is it that Justin's going to engage the one? No, because initiative doesn't come into the stack until after air out, until you engage. Right, so how... Are we saying that Justin, like, there is only by, like, distance then, essentially? Like, that's what it sounds oh, like yeah. we're saying. Is just because, mean, just because like, Steve is closer, actually... Steve is going to go to the one, and because Frank's closer, Frank's going to the other one, and then Justin has an option, right? Where no, you, could, like, you guys could end up deciding that actually Justin is going to engage this guy, and Steve is not going to, you know, Steve can choose, but... If, right, so how does that happen? Who, how, how does Justin choose versus Steve choose? Because of the fact that Steve does not have a choice but to engage the one in front of him. Justin has but a choice. But he does if Justin engages him. No, That's he doesn't. what I'm saying. He would still have to engage the same guy. Steve's, so Steve's not the variable. Justin's the variable. Steve's the constant. Because Steve is, is not in close combat with the one by Frank or the one by you guys. BRB. This is what was just so, by so eligible. By no, no, he, I, is, he is the Steve's distance, only though. eligible target is the one in front of him. Right. Because of the but I'm saying Steve's taking a defensive action. So what I'm doesn't thinking matter. is that like Steve doesn't want to go at him. Steve might want to hang back and wait for the guy to engage him. Right. But, but they're yeah. still Justin engaging. Make, 
No, no, I get that. But but Justin may want to take the initiative in his open to kind of get out in front, like run in while Steve's taking like this defensive stance and engage the Wraith before it ever gets to Steve, right? So let me put it this way. The stance isn't so much that you're not moving or moving. It's what type of martial combat you are doing. So you can still charge in on well, somebody I, in a defensive stance. It means you're charging. I wouldn't charging, think of, you're, you're, you can be defense minded, but if you're charging in, like you're seeking out combat to some extent. Like, like, everybody like is seeking out combat. Shield up. Right, but like, like just anybody in the sword. first one is aggressive. Like we're taking an aggressive stance, which is why we get extra dice for attacking, which is why we get hurt worse when we get attacked is because we have an aggressive stance going in harder. Because somebody in a defensive stance is still going to engage, but maybe not as fast as somebody in an aggressive stance, right? Yeah, I, you would think. I, dis but... I disagree, because there's different aspects of martial fighting and what you're training to oh, do but that's not and, an idea of defensive that's a that's like a strategy mindset like i'm gonna go in and like i want to like use my mental acuity to either move my opponent based on surroundings or something like that right like to your point but i can right? run in uh, so like let's think about it this way if there is a person who is 30 feet away from me i can so, run in to meet right them until I get close to them and then get into my defensive stance. Right. I guess I just I just didn't know how to how do you decide like it's just Justin plan. and the battle plan, I then get to decide who is your eligible target. Off of your eligible targets, then you have to choose the choose off of that. Justin is the only one that has two eligible targets. That is the reason why Justin gets to decide who he's attacking. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> so is because regardless by the distance, because Steve is it's too if far you're from the other one correct, because okay, he that's... he would have to he would have to end up moving across the battlefield to get there, right? But this guy could still end up getting to. Makes sense. Because <clears throat> even, even if it's the aspect that Steve really doesn't want to choose that guy, he doesn't have that option. He is now in combat. It, the guy is going to come to him. Granted, that's, this is where the breakdown of things slightly change. Because Justin's stance, yes, goes before Steve. But him moving forward just makes Steve have to move to engage because that's how the assist happens. Do you get what I'm saying? No, I, I don't, but I don't, I don't think it matters. So like we can just keep going. The Frank's not back yet. So okay. the, the aspect of it is, if you have a control, the control is Steve. No matter what happens, Steve has to do the same thing. Doesn't matter what happens. So it doesn't matter if Justin does engage this thing, Steve still has to engage this because it's the only creature that he can engage. Where Justin... He he can yeah, but, do anything, and it, even if he was even if he was a forward stance, it doesn't change who Frank can engage with. Even if Justin engages with Frank's, because because Frank isn't in with close combat with the other wraith. Mm -hmm. Think of think of close combat is no matter kind of what you do, that person is going to reach you to be able to attack you. No, I I get that. I totally do. Technically, that that wraith, both of them, could attack Justin instead of Frank or instead of Steve. But because they're but they don't get more to plan them, because there's more of you guys. You, you're like in the sense the aggressor. 
even though that's not how this works, because they came upon you, there's more of you, so you guys get to outnumber them in the battle procedure. Where, mind you, if there was the same, if there was um, six wraiths, it'd be completely different. The six wraiths would decide how the pairing works, and then the battle happens. Did I confuse you more? I, I still said like just. Me, I'm not settled on the idea that, like, if a player is in a defensive stance and another player is in an open stance or even a forward stance, that, like, they can't make the decision to, like, Justin would essentially cut off and protect Steve. Or, like, like protecting your hobbits, right, um, would be my thought. Like, yes, there's one enemy, but there's... And Justin has multiple choices, but, like, if Justin engages at the same time and Steve has a defensive to fall back, because he's still in the fight, right? Like, he could still be attacked. So, so look like, at it. Like, could Steve have an option to move away from combat, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if Steve wanted to disengage so while Justin is engaging, like, the idea there is, like, is is timing, right? Like... So just looking at, if you actually look at the distance that shows, right? Roughly speaking, even if Steve disengages and Justin engages, you're still close enough into aspect. So yes, Justin could move forward, attack the Wraith, but it can still engage with Steve. No, no. I, 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 so like in the engagement, it says if there are not enough free enemies to engage, players have... Uh, player heroes left without an adversary must engage an enemy already engaged by another hero, right? But we have already kind of said that we don't have to do that, right? Like, if there's more of us, it's not a must engage. Is that right? Everybody has to engage in combat. Combat does not dictate that you have to attack. Right. So it just says if there are not enough free enemies to engage, players left without an adversary must engage an enemy already engaged by another hero. Correct. Right. So my breakdown of this is I am going to do the people who are forced by eligibility standpoint engagement, which is you, Cody, to the Wraith in the North, Frank to the Wraith in the east I, steve so any of that so thus, what, I'm, what i'm arguing though is like how do you know who's who's triggering the engagement first like what comes first the chicken or the egg right is justin engaged first before steve or is steve engaged first before it doesn't justin matter. because it does matter because no, it doesn't because just well J justin has to be assigned doesn't he Everybody ends up being assigned because regardless, because you are taking it, uh, your assignment, you're taking after movement and that's not the case. Your assignment is before movement. So there's, there's no choice as far as like, if somebody wanted to, to get away. Yes, there is. Like you, you're going to be assigned to somebody. You're going to be assigned to somebody, but you can still get away. That's fleeing. You can say, I'm picking this target, I'm going to run from them as my action. So yeah, basically, I, okay. you, I see in my character sheet because I'm running out of time here for today. No, we're, we have to wrap up anyway, because okay. we're, we're pretty much at the end yeah. for the session. So you can't think of it, my, my breakdown of this is you can't think of movement impacting engagement. I'm not thinking of movement impacting engagement. I'm just thinking of what, what's, what's first, the chicken or the egg, right? Wait, so Justin has two valid options. So, but you're okay. saying he gets to choose his option. But Correct. why does he get to choose an option? Because couldn't he be assigned to engage one before somebody else? No. Like if there's two people engaging... 
because you're going because Steve already has to engage to the one guy, so it is no longer free. He is a forced engagement. Exactly. But Justin is also he in is not the clear forced. line, isn't he? Is not forced because there's currently right now, just looking at this, right? There are four people forced in engagement naturally before movement. There is four people. Before... Okay, you're saying four people are forced in an engagement, but between Cody and I, we're Cody's technically closer than I am. Yes. So why am I forced into an engagement? Because you have no other I mean, eligible right, targets. Because I, because I have no other target. Right. So, but the target is only eligible if it's not already assigned. Negative. Like it's already not engaged. Negative, because you have to choose. That is what the, the second part is. If there are if not there are enough, not enough free, free enemies. Free enemies. Hold on. Right. Free enemies means that they're assigned. They're eligible. Okay. If there are not enough free enemies, you have to engage with somebody that is already engaged with somebody. Hence why you two, it doesn't matter who comes first, you're both going to be engaging the same person. This is why you choose your people first. Where it comes to them is because there is a factor. If I added a third wraith in, in the middle of this, where Frank and Steve could also engage with it, it would go to you. It would end up becoming the factor of now they have multiple choices. So you could skin the cat however you wanted. If there was a third enemy right next to Justin. Frank well, I mean, take... is everybody back? Because we're just talking about this. And I already said like a while ago that it doesn't matter. We should just play it out. I, I don't necessarily think that's right. But. That doesn't really matter. And I don't want to keep going back and forth and talking about it if everybody's already here. So like the way the way this is we... written is the way this is written is very strange because it says that you have to choose an unengaged adversary and in, in the first thing, players in a close combat stance choose an unengaged adversary. And since the forward stance people go first, that means that each of them has to pick. That's so basically not... No, because Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. So the way that it's written, it means the forward stance people, the, I, I think the idea of that is if you're in a forward stance, you're picking somebody to go after before anybody else can get to them so that you can swing on them before anybody else gets to them. Then the open stance people get to pick from whatever, from whoever is still available. If there's nobody available left for them to pick, then they get to choose uh, somebody that's already engaged. And then the defensive people get to choose after that, after everything else is picked to, to see who needs to be defended during the, like the, the way it's written is very strange because it's, it, it shouldn't be that you can, it should be, it should be player heroes in a close combat, choose an adversary to face. It shouldn't be unengaged. It should be, it should be that you just pick whoever on the battlefield and then you can engage them because it's written the way that it is. It's the unengaged adversary thing makes me think that it's meant to be that the people who are forward pick an enemy that isn't currently engaged and engage with them first. And then it goes, the people who are, who are in an open stance, then pick whoever. And if there's more people doing a forward stance than there are enemies, then they get to run up on whoever they want and fight them. Like the way that it's written is very, is very strange. Right. So like my, my thought would be that since Frank is a forward stance, Frank's going to engage his first forcing Justin to engage the other one because Frank's is already engaged, right? Then Steve would get a choice. Steve's only got one option, so he has to engage that one. So my thought is that both Justin and Steve will inevitably engage the same one because of that order. But that's the, again, that's the idea of order. And completely again, if everybody is back, we don't have to talk about this. We can just play it out the way Neil wants to play it out. Like, we were just talking semantics because one of, one of us wasn't here. So if everybody's here, like, we should just keep going. Okay. So I sorry. just don't, I don't have any more time today. I have to go. So okay. I just wanted to say thanks to everybody to come out and help them for Extra Life. I appreciate yeah. Yeah. it. And, Neil, I sent you my character sheet, so you can have Velg do whatever he's got to do. Gotcha. 
All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming well, I mean, out. I appreciate it. Stop here until yeah. Like, there's. I don't. I wouldn't want to continue. I'm sure we're gonna pick this back up another time. Pause yeah. Let's try, we were just trying to raise for extra yeah. life and see how this is going. You know, and these are the conversations mm -hmm. that are gonna happen on stuff like. This. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is a new game, a new system. None of us have ever played it before. So this is, uh, and it's also a game that's an alpha. So it's basically we're testing it, and uh, it's it's important to actually have these kinds of conversations because it really shows, uh, like you know, what can be improved with the system and things like that. Yeah. So this is all just part of playing a newer game is is having these kinds of arguments and discussions over the semantics of how a game works because they need to know, you know, the people who are developing the game need to know that these things are confusing so that they can adjust them going forward yeah i agree but it's it's oh, been okay. good this is fun yeah i'm sad we didn't get as far in combat but i also figured stuff like this was gonna happen just from reading yeah so <laughs> going in that's just how it goes mm -hmm. um we will definitely i would like to try and play this again sometime yeah i, I know you would <laughs> i would hope so yeah, but thanks right. everybody for coming out. Steve, your sister has donated some some money. Nice, thank you, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Nemo. Boop, boop. So that's thank always you, thank nice. You. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's it for us today. Yep. Till next, when our axes meet the enemy, donate <laughs> extra life, help a child. Yes. Yeah, you can donate any time. Uh, we're just doing this to raise awareness, but the donations are, we take donations, or Extra Life takes donations year-round uh, through us and through other creators, so, uh, but mainly, uh, give them through us. <laughs> <laughs> we may be playing heroes, but you're the real hero at home. Donate money today. Exactly. Get rich, 2021. <laughs> get, get ranched on that bone pole left side. That's right, ranch up, son. Hell All right. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thank Happy you. Dane.